Hello. I think we're live. And on a Saturday night, an unusual night for us to be playing games, but this is a special night. We are doing the very first session of, that's right, tabletop keyboard, we are live, with the very first session of Mutant Year Zero Grim and Perilous Studios Edition. Uh, we did previously a session zero, and now we're jumping into it. We're playing. We've got our characters. We've got our arc. Oh, I gotta put the arc art somewhere up for people to see. Damn it. Uh, that Ken did for us. We are short Ken Duque tonight, who is our stalker. So I've got like a stock image, no pun intended, uh, in his place of just like a generic stalker, but he is not here, aka Tarkov. Um, but he is here in spirit and he's listening to us. Hello, Ken. Good luck with the deadlines and uh, the work that you're hammering through. We understand. You gotta pay them bills. So, made a liar me when you said you're gonna do Delta Green tonight. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't remember saying I was gonna do a Delta Green, but um, I'm, it's possible. Are, am I running this from the Area 51 raid, Boffrin? No. Yes. I, oh, my background. If Yes, if officially no. <laughs> But, uh, all right, so, Moon Year Zero, we did a session zero two weeks ago. We have an eclectic group of characters. I'm going to let the players go ahead and introduce their characters. Um, but I'll give a little rundown of maybe the world and the setting and what we're at. So, it is the apocalypse. The, uh, the world is riddled with um, rot, which will slowly kill you, it could be, a.k.a. radiation. I don't know what else you want to to uh, justify it as or clarify it as but uh, rot is ravaged the wastelands there are mutants which are humans who are who are now sterile and they have developed mutant abilities there are humans who have socked themselves away into big underground bomb shelters and kept themselves safe there are anthropomorphic uh animal creatures i don't know what you'd call them um who are subjects that were tested on they're animals that were tested on and they've now become like hybrids of people and animals and finally and last but not least we have robots that are also wandering the wasteland so the goal of this game is to survive you got to find food you got to find water it's hard to come by you have a place called an ark that's where you live and um you build up and it's your your stronghold if you will if we were going to be talking about uh like a fantasy type game like D D or forgotten or forbidden lands um this is their stronghold and then you got to build it up there's there's levels of defense and uh and different things they can add to it to survive they can build cannibalism pens where they can harness people to eat uh they can build like water mills they can build palisades they can build all kinds of things so they are starting off their arc they decided on is going to be an old casino and it is on a a paddle a, a paddle wheel boat um docked on a river next to a hotel the siren's call is the name of it it is run and owned the the the, the arc elder is a a salamander woman is that what we decided on a salamander woman yeah. by the name of siren yeah who lives in the vault of the casino um from there we have some bosses that also kind of like oversee day to day and they have their little gangs within the casino um in sirens cove and we're gonna get to that in a bit here but uh, i think we'd be jumping ahead if we did that so let's do the introductions of the people the players and the characters oh and look at my over i'm gonna fix my overlay because uh uh jeremy is piper proudfoot uh jen and uh jen is now sunny the mic boss and uh so on so i'm gonna fix the overlay adam yours is the only one that isn't moved around so i'll start with adam rose Give an yeah. introduction of who you are, what you do at Grim Perilous, and your character. Uh, I am Adam Rose. What I do at Grim and Perilous Studios is I am a uh, rules developer. And my character's name is Vincent. He is a mutant. Uh, he's a mutant gearhead. Uh, did we want to go into like more detail than that or just that? Yeah, maybe? please, please do. Okay. Um, let's see what I've got written down here. So Vincent, uh, he's got a mohawk dyed a color he calls a fate green. Uh, he's got partially curly hair, bottom of ear length, uh, 
and then a uh, shaved portion in Mohawk for his uh, goggles. He's got some shaggy sideburns and uh, um, one of the sides of his face is cleft with a deep scar uh, held together with metal staples. Um, his body, he's got a small frame, perfect for fitting into small areas to work on machines. And his uh, clothing, he wears a shirt that says tool because it's a mechanics shirt. Um, he wears a harness on top of that, that to hold tools in gear he thinks he will one day have. Um, work boots and jeans for lower body. Very good. Thank you, Vincent. Little thing on the name there is a gearhead. He likes his cars. You notice the name way Vin is spelt. It's like a Vin number. V-I-N is capitalized. There you go. That's right. I think, who was that compliments of? Somebody threw that in the chat last time. I want to say it was either Boffrin or Fawn. Uh, actually, uh, Ken was the first one to notice it. I just said I was Vincent or Vinny. And uh, then uh, Ken was like, oh, Vin, Vincent. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Uh, Featherfall, I saw that you guys did the rebrand. Uh, I did recognize the name that you are, that you were previously dad bod D, but uh yeah good job uh <laughs> congratulations on the big rebrand and hope that's going well thank you for joining us we got boffer in here we got uh jeff's in the chat crazy like gaming's here they want to see a new rudo runner run past me in the background uh someone was asking if you're a duck or a platypus adam we don't have any ducks or platypuses those aren't in the rules we we're talking before we went live on stream there's no warthogs or pigs or swines there are no ducks um in the current rules and I heard this week or last week that there was no reprint happening of Gen Lab Alpha. So I don't know anything. This is just me speculating, but I have a feeling with the popularity of the video game, we might see an updated edition with some some new animals that appeared in that video game. I want to try the expansion. It had a moose in it. What? Mm -hmm. What's a town with no ducks? Nice. Mo moose? Mooses? Meese? <laughs> Are in the rule book. We'll call them meese. Mises. Yeah, I think that's actually correct. To be, to be perfectly honest, let's jump to Adam's left to Jen. Now that I have everybody fixed on the overlay, Jen, who are you? What do you do at uh, Grim and Perilous Studios? And um, tell us about Piper Proudfoot. Uh, hey, everybody! I'm Jennifer Ford. I'm an editor and playtester for Grim and Perilous. Um, we've been doing radiator play sessions lately on Fridays and doing development on Fridays as well. Um, I am playing a animal named Piper Proudfoot. Um, she's a gray brown furred with uh, dark stripes. She has piercing watchful eyes and has a large tooth on a leather cord around her neck. Um, she's kind of a life built um, kitty cat with a kind of muscular build as well. Um, she's wearing a camouflage jacket, loose blue jeans, and a backpack. Very and good. oh, she's a young cat now, so that, you know, we have got more skills or more traits or vice versa, whichever it was. And uh, Oh, you went young? Animal, yeah. Okay. Good to I know. I did a little rewind. Okay. Um, she has animal powers of fast reflexes and silence. Ooh. what i should have asked adam this or vincent i'll go back to him what brought piper to sirens cove what were the events fill us uh, in so she's a young little kitty cat um my idea after reading the lore in gin lab alpha which i have right here sorry pdf i'm not using you anymore um my idea is she got rescued out of the paradise location that's mentioned in the book and somehow got rescued and is now at Saren's Cove. So maybe I was in a box, maybe not. In a box? Yeah, Paradise sure. Valley. You know, paradise, I, yeah. Maybe I got shipped out. <laughs> Do you have any ties to Siren? Uh, I think of her as like a mother figure just because I'm more of an but, orphaned kitty cat. Okay, so previously though, there was no... You weren't from the same lab or anything like that, okay? All right. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Meow. A meow. <laughs> uh, thank you. Vincent, what, what brought you to uh, Siren's Cove? Uh, 
Uh, you were asking Vinny, right? Vinny, sure. Do you want yeah, to call you sorry. Vinny? Uh, no, it's. Um, I'm trying to use keyboard shortcut for mute, but I forgot you've got to have it as the active window in order to for that to work. Um, so, uh, what brought Vinny to it was uh, Vinny has been there as long as he can remember. Um, he also has known Jeremy's character as long as he can remember too. Um, so, oh. at least as far as I know um, from from the lore. Uh, now, is from, that new? There's also well. From what I understood from reading is that we don't necessarily know our history, uh, the mutants. Um, and that's part of like uh, what you're supposed to find out in the GM section. And the book was very clear on if you're a player, don't read this. No, no, bad, bad thing. Don't read this. Yeah. So um, that's why like I'm just kind of leaving it vague a little bit. Um, if you want that to be different, um, then I have a couple ideas. Nope, that is fine. Sorry, as you were talking, I was also putting up a picture of Siren's Cove over top of Ken's PC oh. overlay so people could see the fantastic art he did for our arc. Man, so look cool. at that. So fantastic. Yeah. All right. Sonny, a.k.a. Mike the Box, Bossler. Uh, I think most people know who I am. So um, I'm the boss. Um, and in this game, I'm playing the boss. So uh, my character, Sonny, um, let's see here. I'll, I got a little bio for him. So Sonny is an up and comer at the Ark, brought up under the wing of a former boss named Scully, uh, who currently resides. Uh, our Ark has a ward for mutants who've kind of gone too far. Um, mm. And uh, so, but now Sonny has taken over for Scully. Uh, and leads a crew called the House, and it's casino because the house always wins. That's why they're called the House. Um, largely, the casino contains slot machines, which have been refurbished to take bullets instead of those useless circular discs, whatever those were. Um, and um, let's see here. He's got a good, like, almost dozen of, uh, of people in his group. And let's see here. A baker's dozen. Of uh, the house's uh, house drink, yeah, he's got about a baker's dozen. Uh, his house drink is. Oh, we lost Mike. No, Mike, you're gone. Okay, the drink was too strong. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna move on. We're not gonna mm -hmm. just sit there waiting. Chuck showed up. We were taking bets on how long it would take uh -oh. before Chuck showed up. So good wow. to see Chuck. That beautiful bearded bastard. <laughs> Um, but we'll move to Jeremy. Oh no. While we while Mike figures out his technical difficulties there. All right. I'm Jeremy Jones, uh playtesting, hype man, you know, fluffer, anything that Grim Perilous needs. Um uh, I will be playing the token robot of the group. I am designation uh CL34 N3R or cleaner. Mm -hmm. Um Cleaner is this massive, kind of awkward, like awkwardly bulky form of steel, but it's all painted like this very dainty pastel blue. And like coming from one of the shoulders, there's like this Parks and Rec sunbeam kind of being painted across it. Um, cleaner is a cleaner bot from Mechatron. Um, and not just a cleaning bot, double down on it, a recycler bot too. And uh, Unfortunately, uh, their their home area was destroyed. So several of the robots from where he's from kind of came out into the wastes. Most of them got destroyed in one horrible fashion or another. Um, Cleaner made it made it along. At one point, picked up some weird little imp that was picking up sticks near their their site. And uh, I Vinny calls Cleaner Ma. Uh, because for the most part, Cleaner speaks in a matronly fashion and likes to take care of his darling boy. <laughs> he wants to provide a good home for his darling boy and his friends. <laughs> Except for? 
Except for that disgusting flea bag. I hate the cat so much. <laughs> she sheds everywhere. Uh, co- come on now, Ma. It's okay. Just, uh, you know, it's it's part of what's natural. She, she does her best, you know, Ma. It's okay. Just come on. Put up with it. I like that you make my darling boy happy. <laughs> if you ever break his heart, I will break your skull. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be great. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Let's hop back to Mike. Mike, you left off. We lost you at something about a drink. Your drink of choice. Was that it? Yeah. No, the house's drink uh, is called the Siren, which consists of whatever's in the still at the time poured over rocks. You know, because <laughs> Siren's on the rocks, right? Uh, yeah, it's a dumb joke. Whatever. Uh, that was funny. Anyway, uh, so there's a chain of command uh, in the house. It goes the boss, then the pit boss, floor men, and then dealers. Um, and so my pit boss, my number two is a character named Marlon Rando, uh, who's grown up with me and, uh, we're BFFs. So, um, yeah, I've threatened many times to quit the game if, if he kills my character. I'm not allowed to kill My character. Okay. No problem. But Marlon's (laughs) off the tape. Kill all the other people in my crew. No problem. Kill that guy. It's done. (laughs) (laughs) He's not kidding. I, I joke. The last two weeks that I will kill Marlon Rando or put him in some sort of danger. And Mike's like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> it's fun playing you guys. <laughs> there, there's a long back history of the love for Marlon Rando that makes no sense. But Yeah, I heard it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, no. But it's carried over into the wastelands. Never a game I play. Yes. Is he related no, is to Rando Calrissian? Uh, uh, no, completely different guy. Uh, I'll but it also one from usually from my previous uh, games. But if he dies, I'm okay with that. Randall Kilrizian is also a member of your gang, isn't he? Yeah. No, I got. All right, I can uh, <laughs> list them all off for you. I've got Sonny, who's the boss. We got Marlon Rando, who's the pit boss. We got Rando Kilrizian, a floor man. Uh, Tripod is a floor man. Jason's <laughs> a dealer. Kindly is a dealer. He's a my fixer. If you ever need anything, just ask kindly. Uh, you got Max and Milo. They're both enforcers. Uh, you got Sean, who's a stalker. Uh, Jason was a stalker as well. Uh, and then we got Bernie. He's a chronic, uh, chronicler. Yeah. And then you got Asta, or Asta. I don't know however Ken wants to pronounce her. Uh, she's a slave, because uh, that's Ken's Oh, yeah. Astra. Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's the uh, about Baker's dozen there. Nice. Classy. Someone is saying Ma might need a kneecapping pipe just in case. I, I said Ma has a grenade launcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ma has a repair unit. Ma has a medical unit. And basically what Ma does is just recycles anything. Uh, some of it gets turned into like this weird biological goop that she'll pour into your wounds, which cures you in the most disgusting way possible. But I can treat injuries but also I can take all the garbage and make junk bombs and shoot them out like grenades. It's awesome. I'm so excited. I'm going to probably murder my own team, but it'll be It's going to be fantastic. Right, that's why he's never going to leave the safety of the Ark. Oh no, the poor kitty cat. Hey, leave me out of this. (laughs) I, I don't play that. On purpose. I like it. Looks like you're muted. I mean, I can hear you, but they can't. Can oh, hear, yeah. can you guys hear me now? No. Thank you. Thank you, Crazy yeah. Like. Crazy Ike. I said Crazy Like, and I know that you're yeah. Crazy Ike. Um, I did that earlier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ike. Um, all right. So let me do this again. <laughs> uh, I, we need to get the map. I made a map for these guys that we're going to explore. It's a hex crawl. It's a big part of this game. 
where you're on the map and you're exploring, you're finding things, you need to find food and water to survive. Huge part of this game. You're also looking for artifacts. Artifacts will lead you to Eden. Eden is the ultimate goal. It is it is sanctuary. It is what you're you're searching for. And artifacts are rumored to lead you eventually to Eden. So we're gonna get this map up here. The map is of an actual place in the United States that I took, and there's all kinds of crazy tutorials out there to take real maps, strip them all of all their features, and make them look exactly like the maps found within the Mutant Year Zero books. I went ahead and did that, so we're going to explore and discover where our players are over time, um, and they're going to start filling in landmarks and things along the way. I filled some things in there. You guys can't see it, but we have our arc put on there. Um, oh, just a little ways away from our arc to the northeast, we have, there's a rumored spot where there's cars and ghouls is marked on there, which I think is of interest to Vinny. Uh, north of the arc is a giant section marked with, with rot. It is rot ridden. Uh, but north of that, there's a rumored grub heaven, possibly. There's a place where hmm. stalkers have brought back rumor of all the grub that you will ever need to survive might be up there. Also, to the southeast, we have a possible location of Eden. It is marked on our maps. I can ping you all there. We got a question mark in Eden written in there. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are going to explore these hexes as we go. And uh, we're going to start filling in the squares as you guys uncover things. And this map will slowly fill up and uh, come to life as you traverse the wastelands and not die. And find out where we are. Somebody, it, I posted on the Reddit and somebody's like, I know where that is. And I was like, really? Just by the roads and the water features? They knew, and they were right. Because I saw in another post they put on their I have an idea. Do you? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can say it or I can just like think it and then let you know later. Yeah, you can always just send it to me on Discord. And uh, it's actually two cities. I took a really big geographic area. It's kind of the two cities. But uh, yeah, or um this be a tale of two cities a ta oh look at you say it so i can say i had it too okay i don't know okay chuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah do they, um, the map? do they get to see the map i don't have it with all of these things on here though for them to see the things that i added i need to get it on there so in the future overlay I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little like like how we have the roll twenty cycling between the logos of Mutant Year Zero and all that and Grim Perilous. I'll put the zone map up there. Um and I'll also link it somewhere for everybody to see as we add to it. Because I think that would be kinda cool. Uh isn't along. it on our uh Discord? It is on Chat. our Discord, but it doesn't have, like, the arc location and all the other ah. things I've put on there. I've Those are on, like, Roll20. I've added those on the Roll20 layer um, mm. rather than the actual image itself. Those are all assets I've drawn myself and just kind of dropped them on. So I'll work on that. I'll get that so you everybody can follow along in the future uh, with our arc. Okay, so we did a rundown of the world, the setting, the arc um i'm going to do a little i'm going to drag you guys here i have a little fact sheet for you to follow along with we have some facts and i'll run them down for the stream as well we don't do this every time this is the first session just want to get everybody up to snuff so we've got siren's cove which is our arc siren is our arc elder as mentioned previously she is a salamander humanoid creature she is elderly She's rarely seen outside the vault which in, in which she lives in. There are rumors swirling around Siren's Cove of her health dwindling. And that is why she is rarely seen anymore. And um, some, some power plays are starting to take place amongst the bosses in the arc. Which, Sunny, you, you're aware, well aware of. Uh, at one point, the bosses were welcome to go in there and speak with her at any time on any matter. And she's become a recluse and she has locked herself away from everyone she doesn't go to the the daily meetings she doesn't go for the votes she doesn't have any say really on anything anymore unless it is completely dire but nobody really ever sees her anymore um siren's cove was also created as a haven for everyone mutants robots whatever you are piper uh, i don't know what to refer to them animal people we'll call them animal people uh, 
they're more flea bags. No, not flea bag. Because they're technically <laughs> not humans. They they are animals that have been tested and genetically modified to become humanoid. So we'll call them animal people. Um, specifically, it is also a refuge for for mutants who are on the brink of losing all their humanity. Be it to like the rot or in this game, as as you play you're going to gain more mutations but there's a limit there's a limit to your mutations once you hit four mutations you can't have another one there's no turning back you it takes over and you become just a a creature of of the wastelands so that's siren our elder usda choice uh below that after that we have alcazar who is a another arc boss um we rolled up their kind of like archetypes of what kind of boss or person they are and alcazar is a collector so he's very interested in getting artifacts from the world and bring them in he's the leader of the all or nothing gang and uh he is he is sunny's uh adversary in the in the arc uh sunny and elkazar do not see eye to eye uh you guys can't see this on the screen but elkazar is also a a crocodile man and uh that's the fantastic whole, yeah that's amazing all of the all or nothing gang are actually a, a group of reptiles that um fleed from um paradise valley and made their way to siren's cove um and have taken up here so the whole all or nothing gang or some sort of reptile uh lizards alligators crocodiles whatever what have you so alcazar is a well-dressed he's wearing a tuxedo in the picture <laughs> well-dressed uh crocodile man after that we have Toctor, who is another arc boss she is a uh, of the kingpin uh, archetype she is the leader of the pit bosses, and all of the pit bosses wear uh, like skulls of dead animals, various animals. Nobody ever really sees their faces. Um, they are rumored to be a mix of mutants and possibly pure blood humans because you don't really ever see them like unmasked. They usually cover themselves head to toe in clothes or cloaks as well. Nobody really knows what's going on there. You have seen some of them exhibit some mutations, but uh, others you're you're not really sure of. They keep their identities hidden. They all wear these very menacing masks or skulls of various animals to hide their identities at all time. Um, Toctor also uh, takes advantage of poor Vinny and uh, muscles him around and takes the tech uh, that he finds. He's a bum. Yeah, the artifacts and the tech that he finds out in the wastelands and brings back and gets up and running. Uh, Toctor likes to, uh, to, to rough up poor Vinny and take those things for herself. So Vinny is not a fan of Toctor mm -mm. or the the pit bosses. No, particularly her. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the chat here. USDA choice. Someone needs to play a bull with that tattoo. That would be funny. Yes. <laughs> right. And a and a brand on them. Psst. Uh, last but not least, well, no, this isn't the last boss. I'm only talking about we got Sunny. Uh, last of the NPC bosses. We have four bosses in the arc, and they're all vying for different things. Uh, is Althea. 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 Althea? There we go. Althea. Uh, she's an arc boss. She is of the bureaucrat uh, background. Uh, she leads the face cards, and she's kind of like the go-between between all of the other bosses she tries to keep the peace she's also the voice for the general people here in this arc because outside of these these gangs the general population don't really have a voice so althea tries to be that voice and tries to keep the peace and keep things running smoothly especially in this time of turmoil while siren is uh is in hiding and not really communicating with anybody if she does communicate with anyone it is typically with althea who, um, who is her voice. But a lot of people are now calling into question some of the things that she is being bringing back and relaying to the rest of the arc uh, mm. and saying that it, this is for her own benefit, her own gain. And uh, there's a lot of rumor swirling that uh, she is not truly relaying the real message from Siren. So speaking of our, our arc, the population is 173 mutants animal people and robots that includes the sickly dying and corrupted um you guys made the decision during character creation to make your water was it food supply water supply it was mm -hmm. food i think that we made it 10 which means 
we don't lose anybody every session. So one of the I think we lose less. You lose less. One of the things in this game is every session you're gonna lose an NPC. Someone's gonna die in the arc. But these guys went for the food source so that it it mitigates uh loss. Because we don't want Marlon Rando to randomly die to starvation in, in Siren's Cove. Yep. Yeah, it'd be terrible. Goes by the name Angus, yes. Um So that is a background of the bosses. Mike already gave us a rundown of Sonny and his his gang. They were what again? The house? Yeah, the house is the name of the group. The house. The always house always wins. Wins, so, yeah. <laughs> so that is the stage for our the beginning of our Mutant Year Zero campaign. It's gonna change over time, obviously. So there's there's two aspects to this game. There is the arc itself which is a lot of like social intrigue and interaction. And that can just be a whole game in itself, just being in the arc every session and dealing with what's going on there and the struggles and the power uh, struggles happening there. And then there's the wastelands. You have to go out there and you have to find more food. You have to find more water. You want to find artifacts to try and find Eden and, and get out of this terrible waste and find a better life. So let us begin. <laughs> So we're going to, we begin with the General Assembly being called. Uh, the General Assembly is always held in one of the old auditoriums that would have been the, the place where um, concerts, speakers, events would have been held. So it's a giant auditorium. There's a stage, there's a podium in the middle, and there's just seats. There's, oh, like a thousand seats in this place. So it was a, maybe a little off the beaten path casinos. So this isn't, you know, the biggest place. It didn't get the biggest names. You get a lot of washed up, you know, C-listers here. But, hey, they could still they could still pack, pack them in the seats back in the day. So a general assembly has been called by Althea. Uh, she has uh, started to spread word that um, there are some uh, disturbing things going on and they're going to need some folks to look into it. Um, the bosses, the four bosses, all have representation up on the stage. So, Sonny, you're there, seated with everyone else behind the podium. You have Althea at the podium. And Siren herself, unfortunately, is nowhere to be seen. The rest of you are off in the uh, in the auditorium somewhere in the seats. I don't know if you sit together. I'm assuming Ma and, and Vinny are pretty close, and the two of you are to get, to, always together. And not always, but uh, yeah, for something like this, sure. I would recommend not using this seat. It is stained thoroughly and also looks structurally unsound. Please do not break yourself. Sit here. All right. Whatever you say, Ma. Here, take the seat, flea bag. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you see, Vinny? I tried to be cordial. You just can't win with this flea bag. Well, I mean, <sighs> when you stack the odds a certain way, Ma, come on. You're not fooling anybody. Anyways, let's just pay attention to what those uh, bosses have got to say, huh? That is a wise request. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the bosses are up there, this murmuring and people are chatting and they're kind of spreading rumors and such. The casino and the hotel itself are actually in really, really good condition. The, uh, the 147 that live here do a really good job of keeping this place, um, in, in, in well-maintained order. Uh, it wasn't always this way. It was in dire need of repair, but over the years, um, people were drawn here by the allure of Siren and... And this, this, I don't know, this Eden, if you will. I don't know what you would call it. This paradise that she was creating on the wastelands where she accepted everybody. So people came from far and wide and chipped in to turn this place into the uh, the thing it is now. The thing of beauty that it is. So at the front of the stage, you've got the four bosses. You guys all recognize Althea is at the podium. She is a, uh, a tall, dark-skinned woman with an eye patch. She's got a scar across the one eye where the patch is on. And um, she's a very confident-looking person. She stands at the front. She raises her arms to kind of silence everybody. I said, please, please, please be quiet so we can begin. 
You can hear Alcazar kind of lets out a cough. And, uh, says something under his breath when Althea speaks. Sonny, you pick up on that. You, you've got you've got uh, talker between the two of you. That's good. That's good. There's someone between us. So you don't you don't get at odds right then and there on the stage. Your men, your gangs, all mm-hmm. have their own sections where they're seated together in the auditorium. I don't know if you wear colors or what. <laughs> oh, look at this. GN is here. What's going on, buddy? So Toctor, or Toctor, Althea raises her arms and says, There's some situations that have been brought to our attention that we need to discuss as a people. First and foremost, our water purification system. I've been informed it's on the fritz. Rot is appearing in the latest samples. We have a stock. We have barrels that'll last us for a couple weeks. But after that, our water supply will be no good. I don't know if that means we're going to have to move. But ideally, we'd like to find the pieces or the parts to get this running again. And everybody kind of gets up in an uproar and there's panic and people are shouting and stuff and you know, she kind of raises her arms. And she waits for people to just kind of calm down. Now, I, I know there's a lot of you out there. We have a lot of fixers like Tinker Things. I'm going to call on the group of you to pool together and try to find a solution for this. Obviously, we don't want to leave Sirens Cove. This is our home. We've made it into this, this haven on the wastelands. So I will be talking to all of our stalkers. To see if they can go out there, find the pieces, and get this thing up and running again. Now, on the subject of stalkers, some of you may have noticed Tarkov has not been back for a number of days. Tarkov went to the south of our Ark five days ago. He was made aware of the situation, and he was sent out to go find some parts for a water for purification. We have not seen or heard from him now for five days. That is not like Tarkov. He is one of our most seasoned stalkers and most reliable. I'm worried. We're going to have to send a party out to go and try and find out clues, leads, anything of what's going on with Tarkov. See if he's still alive, where he may be. Possibly rescue him. If need be, hopefully, he is not lost to the wastes. Now, Tarkov is Ken's character. So Ken's character is missing. Ken's character needs some rescuing, or somebody's got to go look into it. Well, I know I'm down. That guy, he just comes in to my den. Like, he's covered in scrap. And he just like shakes it like a dog and then it's all on the ground. I kind of like that. So, I'll go. Yeah, you raise your hand and she looks out on the crowd. The light's shining on her. She goes, Vincent! Vincent, thank you. Thank you. We're going to need, we're going to need you working on that water for purification. Is there anyone else who would join Vincent? No offense, Vinny, but you're not, you're not the most apt at uh, traversing the wastelands. Oh, I never said I was going by myself. You kidding? I will take care of my darling boy. <laughs> I think I well. could probably uh, put together a crew uh, to see this done. Oh, so Sonny speaks up. Piper also volunteers. Piper volunteers, and be- there's hushes, and and people are like, oh, 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 and chattering. And then Sonny, you stand up, and Alcazar whips his head to the side. Would it not be better for a boss to not get involved in this? Yeah. If you can't drink water, well, uh, what are you going to swim in? What kind of question is that? Exactly. It's a dumb question. Just you had one, I had one, right? So uh, I'll get this taken care of. (laughs) (laughs) GN, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. GN's one of our, well, one of our regular players on the channel. 
Oh, nice. It's good to see him here. Um, he goes, well, if we're going to send some of your men, then I'll send some of mine. Eh, the more the merrier. Fine. I said two of my men to make sure the group of you don't just take off with the, the parts and pieces and never come back. And keep it for yourselves to sell. Now, nah, keeping parts is what you do. Um, he turns yeah. to uh, talk to her between the two of you. Goes, ah, we both know that's not me. <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll be heading this. You can bring a couple boys. I'll get them and a couple boys, as I point out to uh, you know uh, Vinny and uh, Ma and Proudfoot and. Uh, We'll get the sandals. Um, Althea turns to, to, to you and Alcazar and says, Thank you, thank you for, for volunteering some of your men. It's much appreciated. I you know, with it being winter, I'm surprised that uh the two of you are willing to send some of your men out there into the wastelands. It is extra deadly right now. Well, it's either we do this, or in a few weeks we all die. So uh, I'll I'll take my fate in my own hands. Thank you. Very well. There's one more matter to bring up. To the west of us, the far side of the lake, which we are situated on, there has been a rumor of a vessel. Half in the water, half on land. And some strange creatures roaming about it. Now, we've not seen this before. Mind you, we don't go over there very often. But now with the lake being frozen, it has made it easier to traverse and make it to the other side. Um, that is something else that we need, uh, we need looking into if it's a possible threat to our arc and our livelihood. Now, we don't need to do this today. But I do fear... That uh, if there are enemies to the Ark nearby, that is a little too close to comfort. So, what? Just sort of a, a going and looking, seeing what's out there, a little looky loo, or are you trying to get a problem taken care of? Well, it's a problem we want to take care of, Vinny. Perhaps best done with a stalker. Well, I mean, then if we need a stalker, then we need to go find the stalker first before we go and do that, huh? I mean, you see where I'm going with this? Is strong. Huh? Your logic is impeccable, Vinny. I am so proud of you, my darling boy. Oh, thanks, Ma. <laughs> yes, Vinny, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So, like I said then, if you, this group wants to go out and look for Tarkov, he was last, uh, his last known coordinates were to the south. He was going due south of the Ark in search for parts for a water pur purification unit. Um, good luck, dress warm, and uh, hopefully you're able to find signs of him or him himself. And people start kind of chatting and the whole place fills up with people talking as Althea walks away from the podium. She turns to the group of the U3 bosses and just kind of nods and walks off. Do uh Alcazar starts to get up and step towards the podium uh, as she's stepping off the stage. Ah! Watch uh do we really feel that it is best to go look for, for a stalker in winter, like she says. And she stops and she turns as she's about to leave the stage. Should we not be going for the water purification parts? Is that not more important? Who cares of this talk off? We can find and train more stalkers. I have stalkers in my employ. So do these two. What do we need? To go it would them? seem that this journey would benefit us twofold. This stalker was sent to find water purification parts. Finding him and finding the parts is a double win. Thank you again for sending your people to help us. I don't like robots. 
but I like you. Your people are clean and efficient. I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> which one, which, which one, one is that? Which one of the bosses does uh, the sex bot, the companion bot work for? Did you decide that? Uh, I think she would work for the bureaucrat. Okay. I mean, that, that, <laughs> so like the nicest bureaucrat also has the person I hate working for her. So even though what was her name again? Be, it's Geisha. I'm trying to remember what that pulls out to in lead speak. You have it on your character sheet. Yeah, let me get that pulled up. Let me find it. So everybody has someone that they, someone or something that they hate, and it's um, designation nine three one S H four. Otherwise, Geisha. Cleaners is a companion bot that traveled uh, with him across the wastelands for Mechaton. All right, so cleaner or geisha i'm sorry works for althea okay very good <laughs> alcazar kind of throws his arms up and all of his his reptilian gang the all or nothing gang all get in an uproar and they tear off out of the auditorium with him and they storm out and uh, as he's walking by you son he goes you're not going to get any help from me or my men i wouldn't expect anything from you guys i mean it's the middle of the winter you just got to sleep on me good luck I hope you freeze to death. Nah, eh, I guess you would. <laughs> He's kind of like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, You're so wasting you your breath. Um. All right. So, what I'm, what we're doing here, and what I like to do is, I'm going to give you guys a whole bunch of things to do, and you might not necessarily have enough time to do all of it because there's going to be a ticking clock. So when you have a session, you're, we're going to start filling up our map with things. Just like real world, real life. It's not going to be like, hey, here's one quest. Let's do it and move on to the next one. There's going to be a whole lot of things going on in this world. And that's why you'd be given a few things here. And there are set timelines that I've written down on all of them. Uh, you might not make it to the other side of the lake. You might not You might not get that water purification fixed. Um, but it's things that we'll start marking down um, as, as things to do. In each session, we're going to have another thing to do. If that makes sense to you mm -hmm. guys and works. The other thing we're supposed to do is hold a general assembly to decide what we're going to use our development points on this session. Because you guys get to work on something in your arc. Hmm. So, you get to do a project. A project. Um, players may initiate new projects during the session assembly. Write down each chosen project on the arc sheet or directly on the arc map and note how many work points that project requires to complete. During each session, every PC may work uh, on one project for every radioactive symbol rolled. The number of remaining work points is reduced by one. When all work points are gone, the project is completed and ready for use. So you guys have work points equal to the number of PCs from what I was reading today. So we've got five pcs technically so you have five work points um so you guys have the book handy i have the pdf open yeah the, the pdf do you have an idea of something you'd like to work on this session typically you'd have to send spend work points to send npcs out into the wilds to go search for things but because it sounds like you guys are heading out yourselves you don't have to spend work points on that that is considered free but you can spend your work points now on developing something in your arc. Uh, another thing that uh, we may want to see about is that I would like to try and see if I can comprehend my chainsaw. Yes. Mm. Yes, you do. So that takes a certain amount of... Which one is it? Um... development requirements you have to have a certain level of technology sorry to to do certain things yeah outright but uh um i think it's like that's what uh comprehend is for is when you don't have those oh, requirements yeah do you want to comprehend your, your chainsaw you found this thing out in the out in the wilds you brought it back you see a motor you see a chain you see uh you think maybe it hooks onto something as part of a, a motor an engine does it power something you've been looking it over the last few days you know doctors Doctor's pit boss gang comes through and they kind of rough you up and they start poking through things, but you've done a good job of keeping it hidden. Maybe you put mm -hmm. it in a trunk of an old car that's worn down in the garage because you live in the garage, right? Um, yeah. 
and you keep you've kept it covered up in there and locked in a trunk so do you want to roll your comprehend to see if you can figure out what this thing is used for because you start with a with an artifact and you rolled a chainsaw for the folks I who did. here <laughs> which is pretty damn cool yes yeah so uh i just click on my character sheet that uh it says uh comprehend the little die next to it yes please and if you have any gear that would help you with that role, you can add it on there. I don't, I can't think of anything in this situation. Like, so you had a manual for, or maybe you had a catalog, maybe you had a Sears catalog and you were like, <laughs> oh, I could read in here. Hey, that's, that's for cutting down trees. Like with the description of, of that, uh, that item that could give you like a gear bonus for, for instance, like anything that you could think of that you could say, like, make sense. I'll be like, sure. I'll give you a gear bonus die for that. But unfortunately at this point, you don't have anything like that. Um, but uh yeah just go ahead and roll your your comprehend skill all right so you've got you got one success which is all you need well that's all i need for me to use it but uh i was hoping that i could possibly teach someone else how to do it like ma like ma so oh God. <laughs> that way we can you know install it on her as long as she's got a free port open right uh Weld a That's... chainsaw to the robot. I mean, you've got a free port open, right? Yeah, I mean, Ma doesn't really carry anything on her. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I'm thinking I would like to push this roll. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> you got a lot of ones in there. So you got a one. Oh, I just on your see skill. I I so, I don't know how to see so that. So ho hover over the boxes. I don't have our. I just realized I don't have our die rolls on the overlay. Ooh, okay so yeah. i will describe I this what an aperture holy crap uh oh. so he, he rolled zero for his base die he got one let me let me go over how rolls work in this game sorry okay i'm getting ahead of myself here <laughs> so when you roll for a skill or to attack or anything you always everything is d6s in this game you okay. roll the number of d6s equal to the stat tied to the skill that you're rolling for so in this instance um comprehend is tied to his wits so what how many d how what's your your wit score five so he's gonna roll five d6s for his wits what is your comprehension score that's the skill tied to it three you roll it? three so you roll another three d6 for that and then like i was saying if he had any gear that would help him contribute to success he'd roll gear dice on top of that so you're rolling he's rolling eight d6 right now and all he needs is one six on all of those dice for a success. Um, everything else means nothing. Unless you push your roll. So you can push your roll whether you succeed or fail at something. And if you do that, um, you're going to take damage. Maybe. Yeah, I see that now. <laughs> like, uh, but I, also... I see how to how to see how many ones I've got. I've got three <laughs> ones so far. Yeah, you hover over it. You're going to take damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and damage comes off of your stats, which are the dice you roll so yeah, that's right your hit points are your dice so it's it's a slippery slope but that also determines well in this game you start with mutant points and forbidden lands you don't start with any magic points if, and mm -hmm. um ability points to use your and you have to push to get those first points you guys all start with points to use your abilities in this game it's it's a lot more forgiving um so adam rolled one two three one so if he pushed his roll he'd have to set well not on the skill die you'd have to set the one um one aside that you rolled in your base dice and you roll everything else over again the remaining dice oh yeah because you don't there's no negative effects on the skill dice on skill dice so if he rolls any other ones yeah. he's going to take damage to his wits he's going to take damage to the skill he was rolling on so he's going to take dice off of that pool um but he's going to gain bonuses he's going to gain mutant points which he's going to use to trigger his abilities when he's out in the wastelands so it's up to him it's completely up to you if you want to push it you don't have to. You start with mutant points at the beginning of the game. Um, so you, it's not like you have to generate them to use your abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think since it's the beginning of the game, I'm just going to go ahead and not do it. Okay. Uh, just kind of see the way things develop. But I know how to use it. And then when you first figure out how to use an artifact, I think you get points for it, but that's only if you turn it in. Yes. Okay, so no, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to turn it in. Eventually, I want to get Ma to know how to use it. Uh, but uh, 
That, that's okay, Vinny. I, I feel that from what you have described to me, this would be a very messy thing to use. <laughs> I, I, I do not think it would be a good idea. Yeah, well, I mean, I, maybe if you saw someone use it uh, and you saw the good it could accomplish, then uh, maybe you want it. But, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hang on to it for now. And uh, And I don't even think we got any... I don't even think we got any gas to put in it, so... No, yeah. I don't think it comes to gas, does it? <laughs> um, so you have a chainsaw, and you know how to use it. Uh, <laughs> which is pretty damn awesome. And yeah. apparently this noob needs to work on the overlay and get the dice... How do I not have the dice rolls on here? Uh, That's right. <laughs> we're going to do a lot of narrating tonight for dice rolls. Uh, okay, so you're just going to stash it away, or are you going to carry it on yourself? What do you think you're going to do with this this chainsaw? Uh, seeing as I don't have any, uh, uh, sorry, I'm speaking in character when I'm speaking out of character. Seeing as how I don't have any gasoline or anything like that, I'll just put it away in my, uh, hidey spot okay. and, uh, um, you know, just think about it later. Okay. Sounds good. If you're needing the stats for it, I'm sure you have it, but they're on page 199. I just looked for them. Uh, I think I put them in on the character sheet. Okay. Yeah, but that's all right. I'm not going to be using it. So it's all right. That's right, Boffrin. Boffrin says, the Grim Streamer needs no dice to TPK. You are correct, no sir. <laughs> you are correct. I need no dice. We're back in the dangerous worlds of free league games where death is a free-flowing currency. Um, Classic. Yeah. Did we I would apologize for, for doing a tangent, but one nice ability of the the cleaning skill that comes with this particular robot is I can actually reduce rot. So it might be a short-term solution, but could I try using my cleaning ability to at least somewhat reduce the rot on the water we have to maybe extend the time period? So are you a rot eater? Well, basically the cleaning ability, uh, like it, there's no rule required to just make things clean, but that special skill can actually uh, reduce rot in an area. It's a small amount. Yes. Yes, you so could like, use that on. I know, it, I know it wouldn't like permanently fix the water situation. But maybe the existing stores we have, maybe we could make just a little bit more water palatable. Maybe buy ourselves a little bit more time. Yeah, you could do small amounts. I'd, I'd let you get away with that. That, uh, that would work. I mean, well. I mean, well. It's, it's really for Vinny. <laughs> let me try and. Um, sorry. So back to projects we were looking at. Um, I mean, there's always defenses because I mean we have food up there, so I think we can kind of get by without having like some of the food projects right away. Um, instead, look at maybe like defenses, which increases like our warfare, uh, or uh, there's a temple that will increase increase our culture. Uh, I don't see any base projects to increase technology. I'm guessing that's just we bring back artifacts and that can... artifacts. Yes, 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 yes. And there's museum, but it requires a uh, five culture in order to do it. And we don't have much culture, so no, you don't. Um, you didn't put so, yeah. any points in culture. You have zero to nine, right? Mm -hmm. I guess if yeah. it takes five, you have zero to nine. I don't. Know. I guess you, no. Got... I guess no. You'd have to put five into it. Yeah, yeah. That's just the the range. Okay. I think we got 10 in food, 2 in technology, and nothing else in the other two. Correct. Okay. They couldn't. Yeah, I would have to look it up. But yeah, that sounds right. So then um, a temple to luck is casino, right? <laughs> yes. Or if we have these people that are potentially threats to the Ark, we might want defenses. A palisade? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Some sort of defense. Now, do we, because uh, usually, from my understanding, uh, projects will have certain skills, like defenses has force and, or scout, or you could potentially use those skills to help add extra successes to it, right? Extra success to what? I'm sorry. So when you're working on projects, generally there's a skill that's listed by the project. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so I didn't know like that dev bonus? Is that what you're referring to? Well, so if we look at defenses, 
Um, what page number? Is that on 104? Okay. Uh, dev requirement is none. Uh, skills is force or scout. Work points to complete would be two times the number of PCs, so 10. With Ken here, it's 10. And then the bonus would be uh, 2d6 of the warfare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're correct. So that's why I was saying, like, you roll in every atomic symbol. So every six. Every six you okay. roll helps uh, speed it up. Um, so, yeah, you'd be rolling those those skills. Right. So does anyone have those skills? I bet Ken has scout. Uh, yeah. And the robot skills are, like, way different than your guys. They're all reading. I don't have any of those skills, but I do have command. Uh, scout and what else? Uh, force. I have two in scout. I have force. I got one in force. Right, right, so then you can make a roll it. and not just use your base, uh, just attribute dice. So, As it so happens, when it comes to force, I have got it. <laughs> Every six you roll, the remaining work points for the project is reduced by one. So do we want to have Piper do the scout part? Well, I think everyone gets to roll. Yes. Oh. Mm. So you just choose one or the other, and then you make your roll. Okay, who do we want to go first? Or do we just all do it at once? I think we can all just do it at once. Or do okay. we do it now, or do we do it at the end of the session? Do it now, and then it will be built over the course of the se se okay. session. So I'm going to use my special command ability and have my boys work on it. Yeah, you guys all get to roll. As I'm reading here, so there's no PCs in the arc, then it's different. They'll choose projects when you guys aren't there, on their own, and the bosses will fight and argue. Given the current sure. current situation, um, the bosses are not going to fight over defenses. It is winter, water's at risk. Um, people are scared, they're worried, and they're all for building defense. So. The new Man. streamer who did not put the dice rolls up there, uh, Jeremy got all zeros, got no sixes. I shouldn't say all zeros. No sixes, so no successes. Same with Eight me. Uh, should I push it? Vinny got no sixes, and oh, we got uh, the boss, Sunny, got two wow. sixes. So that's going to reduce it by two. So that takes us down to, what was it, eight? I guess Ken's not here. I'll roll for Ken. He's not here. But we're counting. Yeah, just have him roll. Yeah, I looked up the... Apparently the clean thing, all it does is it's like a 10, 10 by 10, 10 meter by 10 meter area that you can deca decontaminate for each one that you... Or each uh, six you roll. So it would be like a very small portion of water. Oh, like a bottle right. of water. It's, I mean, I mean, 10 meters is an okay amount but you could probably like clean a barrel or something like that yeah it'd know? be like a single barrel so he doesn't have anything in scout or what was the other one i'm sorry scout or force scout so then he force. could just roll his agility base strength, but his agility is a five so he's got a good chance here yeah um... dang you got two Nice. Jen got two. Uh, nice. Force. Oh, nice. Force or scout. Oh, it's wits. Scout. Never mind. Uh, his wits is his wits is a three and his strength's three. That's three either way. All right, let's go for it. Zero successes for for Tarkov. All right. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna push it this time. Just to see. Boom. Uh, out of the gates, so, Vinny. How do, how do you push? I'll push yeah. too. Why not? Do you just roll again? And... You roll again. So we'll do them one at a time. So so for everybody, Jen got two successes. Recap. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, we gotta we gotta start working in the cats, the musical references. <laughs> Rum Tum Tugger. I have like Bjork stuck in my head all day. I'm a hunter. Yes, tabletop <laughs> keyboard. This is for Ben Lansdale. So this was the very first game that Free League put out, uh, which who also published for Ben Lance. So this is they all use a uh, a varied um, a variation of the same rule set. So aliens, Coriolis, <clears throat> this for Ben Lance, all use the a, a variation of the same system. 
So pushing is a thing in this. Uh, and so is so is death is a thing in this. Like rolling on a crit table when they go to zero hit points and with a very good possibility of dying uh, or losing a limb uh, like we saw in Forbidden Lands. Yes, pushing is how you die. So stay able to get up to keyboard. Uh, it's true. That's how angel wings are made. Uh, <laughs> he knows all too well. <laughs> So Adam, you are <laughs> yours. You have no zeros though. You are no ones. So you can just yeah. have to re-roll everything. Yeah. <clears throat> so just roll again. Roll again. Same way I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Stop. I'm on standby for PC death. Yes. Thank you. Uh you, uh, rolled, you rolled one one. No, two ones and a six. Uh, Dang. <laughs> so you're gonna take two hits to your strength your strength's gonna yeah. drop by two dice uh what well, you only have three in it right yeah so i'm down to one oof that's not good but you gain two mutant points that's right yeah you gain I'm two mutant points and um that's another success that's gonna bring this this down okay awesome we had our first push so you could have passed out in forbidden lands if you did that and you passed out you can actually like roll on tables to die this one is more forgiving it doesn't have that for when you push yourself unfortunately so there's so, no push button you just have to re-roll you okay. have to re-roll but you have to take out dice so let me see your roll here mike you got you're good you don't have to remove anything if you roll ones on your skill dice you never take those away because those are skills those are things you've learned so you can't unlearn them when you fail a roll and try it over again um it's just off your base dice and your gear dice you will subtract the ones Skill never. So you so roll have again. Four base dice. Four. I would have you two skill dice. Out. I'm sorry. You take your sixes out. So you're gonna ro- you're gonna roll one less base die. You take the sixes and the ones out. Yep. Oh. No, nope, I got nothing. <laughs> you got ones. I got ones. You got ones, baby. He got three ones. He got two on his on his sk- on his uh, base attribute. So you're gonna take two points of damage to that attribute. <clears throat> to your wits. So you go from four dice to two, and you don't take any any damage for the skill die, um, but you don't gain any um, mutant points off that one either. So I gain two mutant two points. Two mutant points. Fun. So you should have a total of three now because you start with one. Cool. Uh, well, Something's I wonder oh. how you fine boys hurt yourself, my little rascal and my darling boy. Get over here. Look at yourself. boys will be boys, as you say. I know. Get over here. You've made a mess of yourself. And like the like the chest cavity kind of opens up, and there's this swirling concoction of energy and goop, and tons of cat hair that's been vacuumed up. Scowls over at Fleabag for a moment, and obviously Vinny gets treated first. Okay. Uh, wits has to be. Uh, you have to sleep for wits. So. But. Uh, just like oozes out some goop in there. And then lots of uh, the cat hair kind of gets slightly burned. It's like a really sickly smell of garbage and burned hair is the hairs kind of get fused together to be turned into like uh, stitches in your wound. And then it just burns shut with a little bit of plastic. So pretty much anytime you get healed by, by Ma, you have like some weird calico effect of whatever gets coated of just whatever garbage has been repurposed. Mm. But you got back one point of strength. Yay! And then I'm not really sure how I can heal. I'm not really sure if you can heal wits. Sleep, sleep yeah. is either way you, you deal just, with wits. Yeah. If you, if you sleep, you get all of your dice back. If you rest or whatever. In this game, napping uh, cures wounds. <laughs> Mental okay. wounds. Well, that's fine. Ma would still immediately come over and treat the wound. Even that's physical just... wounds. If you sleep, oh, really? you get all your strength back. Really? Yeah. Oh, napping, so napping do you still stab wounds? Yeah, in this game. <laughs> well, uh, now, uh, does your does that medical unit cost you energy points to use? It does. Okay. But I can eat some garbage and get a point back. I'm okay with <laughs> spending a point. There's garbage everywhere. This is the wasteland. Pretty much. Like, it turns out being a cleaning bot's really efficient. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the tough. There are much tougher robots out there as far as, like, fighting things. But cleaner will keep going and going and going. Uh, speaking of fighting things, I know we're going to come across some danger. 
And so I, I was wanting to know if I had anything like maybe I could make before we go out there, like it maybe help us keep warm, avoid the rots, avoid, you know, if we get in a fight. Know. Have you made uh, or can you make rot suits? That's a great question that I want to ask you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I can make them. It's just, uh, you know, I need to have the materials. And since you're the, uh, you know, since you're you're the GM, um, you would be the one that lets me know if I have them or if I need to go find them. Or... <laughs> My darling, I'm fine either I way. have something to give to you. You? Oh. oh. <laughs> My soul and prized possession. My rubber band. That... Huh? <laughs> I bequeath it to you. This is all that remains of Mighty Mechatron, this single rubber band. It is industrial grade rubber. All right. Uh, you know, I, I, I suppose I could do something with this, huh? It helps you build stuff. Basically, it gives you a gear dice. Oh. And you, can re you can use it on something when you build something. And you get and a gear dice by trying to build cool. it. That is literally the only item he starts with. If you look at that's all clean it bot. it's like it here, is... it's like rubber band. That's all he starts with. <laughs> it is literally the only thing cleaner has left of his home. Yeah, so uh, I I can make uh, arrows, a scrap gun, scrap armor, a shield, rot suit, cold suit. You have enough materials to make two rot suits. I just rolled. I rolled randomly. Okay. Uh, two well... rot suits. So rot. Dibs. Dibs. Yeah, as a boss. Yeah. Not dip. Rot, rot, rot suit for this guy. Um, rot is inevitable. You guys are going to go out into the wastelands, and there's going to be rot. It's there. It depends on how much rot you encounter. It's like radiation. Think of it that in those terms. So mm -hmm. it's on a scale of one to three when you enter a zone, and three being really bad, and you gain rot as you're out there. When you go back to the Ark, you can rest. You can take a bath or whatever else to try and get rid of the rot to decontaminate and get it off of you but there you have to roll when you do get rid of it and there's there's always that chance that it's going to remain and you and over time you're going to unable to get rid of all of your rot it's going to keep building and building and building so rot suits put up a barrier between the players and the rot and will eat the the amount of rot in that um in that zone if it's underneath the the defense so that's why we're looking at making rot suits before we go out into the wilds okay so I would need to make a jury rig roll, and, yeah. and now I can add a plus one gear bonus because it's rubber band. Yeah. Pew. You can okay. break the rubber band though. I could. But then he would just I have to bring see. the band back together. <laughs> We're getting the band back together cleaner. Oh, ha ha ha! <laughs> All right, so ah, uh, if you'll. This is terrible. Nobody can see the roll. So he rolled a total of one six altogether. So you successfully craft one rot suit. Out of all that, not a single one. This is what you're good at, right? This is yeah. what you made your character around is jury rigging and making things. This is his yeah, specialty no. that he went. I believe with. in you. Well, this is uh, this is going to be a temporary thing. Like I couldn't. I couldn't find materials that are uh, just, you know, uh, they're going to hold together forever. You see, it uh, it all goes back to my childhood. But uh, anyways, we'll get into that later. Here you go. You give it to Sunny? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's two, isn't it? Is the the level uh, one rot suit? Three. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to try and craft the other one. You're going to wear like a big fur coat over top of it, Sunny? Yeah, I think Sonny would be wearing like your, uh, I don't know, whatever, like it suits. See, normally they wear suits at casinos, right? Like, they dress nice. They sharp. You do dress okay, nice, so. but remember it is winter, so you got to dress appropriately as well. I'm gonna yeah, say you guys have, you have You have winter dress. I'm going to say that. I'm not going to make you guys okay. go out there in like shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> going out there <laughs> naked. Yeah, naked. So you succeeded. Adam succeeded on his roll, or Vinny succeeded on his roll, but he did get a. He got two sixes, and he also got um, two ones. If he pushed it, he would break his rubber nah. band. Um, but he, he, he success, successfully crafted a rot suit. Yeah, and this one's permanent. Oh, this one's not yeah. just going to deteriorate over time. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the first time he rolls uh, Sunny to resist rot using that, it breaks. But uh, 
this one <laughs> it stick around, sticks around. Uh, so, we were able to pull some good stuff together. That one should be yours, my darling boy. You think so? Of uh, course. You're the one who can make more. Therefore, it is logical that you should be the one who survives. You okay with that, Piper? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> It's okay. Right. What's the worst that could happen? Her hair could fall out from rot poisoning. Oh no. I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say because it, it was mean. Uh, I'm glad you, you did. Mean, mean. It's perfectly reasonable to state the facts. Okay. So I uh, put on the rot suit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You put on the rot suit. That's marked in mm -hmm. X on our, on our map south of the arc because that's where you want to go looking for. Mr. Tarkov. Um, so you got your rod suit. So what is that? What does Sonny's look like? Is it like like tin foil that's like been taped to him and it's <laughs> no, it's like, it over time and it's like a tarp that's like insulated? No, I I found um I found some uh 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 well I'm having a brain fart right now. It's like uh plastic wrap you put around food. Oh so right. nice. Saran wrap. Yeah, and I just Trademark. wrapped him up in that. We're not it's like that's awesome. We're not sponsored like, by Saran Wrap. Yeah. Very insulating, though. Keeps wrap. the heat in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. make sure that, uh, you know, you keep everything tucked in nice and tight. Um, <laughs> and don't go. Oh, my God. Don't go above your waist in it. And uh, it'll, you know, it'll be all right. It'll be fine. Just uh, remember, not above the waist. <laughs> And uh, mine, yeah. Let's let's go with the tarp and duct tape. It's a little bit more permanent. Yeah, it makes a lot of noise <laughs> as you're walking around the waist. Okay, so shall we head out to find Mr. Tarkov? It is 10 a.m. You guys met for your general assembly first thing in the morning. You guys have milled about. You've crafted some rot suits. You're getting ready. You don't normally go onto the wastelands. This is a big deal for the four of you, especially. Well, especially Sunny, because, like, this is kind of a below you, or, or what's your thoughts on this? How do you feel about this? Tarkov is your number one stalker. He's your number yeah, one. Yeah, and he's actually my buddy, so that's another reason why Sunny would go mm -hmm. out there. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's his main reason why he wants to go. Uh, plus, he knows that uh, if he can get artifacts, he can, like, dangle those over Alcazar and be like, look what I got that you don't have. Ha ha ha. So, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Except Toctor doesn't take them. Well, I mean, we, it'll eventually get turned in, just not right away, right? <laughs> we got to get an advantage out of it first. We got we got an extreme power struggle going on here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Head on out to the waste. It is cold, blistering. You guys are on a lake. You're on a frozen lake. So it's even worse. The wind is just like whipping across. Uh, construction has begun on, what are we, we're building a palisade? Is that what we decided on? A wall. Yeah, defenses. I think is what it was. Some sort. And what did we get? How many it down successes? To? Yeah, what did we get it down to the end? Uh, I got two. I two. think Jen got two. Prodfoot got two. Yeah. Adam got one. Or uh... yeah, I pushed it and got one. Okay, Tarkov was not helpful, and uh... Jeremy. Oh, sorry. Uh, Cleaner was not exactly helpful. So, so got we got down halfway. Zero. You know, not bad. So that means it will be built by the end of the session. When you guys Boom. return to the Ark, there will be a wall. A fortification nice. of, of sorts. It'll be like a mix of like old cars and like siding, metal siding, nice. all kinds of like mismatch. They better, not, they better not raid my shop. Oh, well, who knows what's going to happen when you're gone. <laughs> Life yeah. continues in the Ark when the PCs yeah. aren't there. <laughs> If you are worried about your possessions, I am burdened by nothing. <laughs> it's good to know. I mean, uh, yeah, that uh, that uh, rubber band might have been putting some tension on you, Ma. It's good to see you, you know, release that. Well, we all have to let go of our old life and look to giving forth to the new. Okay. Yeah. What you say? <laughs> of course. Let's go clean this beautiful world. All right. All right. Boffin says dim jokes. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you see that new Rudo runner just go by? 
<laughs> Missed it. So funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so, are you taking a stalker with you, Sonny? Yeah, I'll bring Sean. Um, so he's just got the base stat of, uh, stalkers. Uh, he's got, uh, like a two strength, five agility, three wit, two empathy, and then has a three and find the path. Okay. So find the path. That is what we are looking for here. See, boss, do you even need to roll any other characters to play? He's I know, like right? <laughs> Mike's got, yeah. Mike is a party. <laughs> I like to party. We like, we like to party. <laughs> so. The point behind this, everybody who's watching, you want to take a stalker with you into the wasteland because they find the most direct pa path through a zone, and they find the most rot-free path through a zone. Um, in term, game terms, it is said that if you pass a roll, it takes roughly like four hours to get through a zone. Um, you never have to roll again to go through a zone unless I decide to put things in there. Uh, but once they've been through once, they're good, and it's like half the amount of time to get through it. But that first time that they're trudging about and going through a zone, they have to make this this find the roll path. If there's nobody in the group that that has find the roll, then they are just subject to whatever the hell's in there, and uh, they don't get to get a jump on it, and they get the full brunt of the rot and everything else that I've I've decided to throw in there. We almost went out without one. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Yeah, the robot doesn't care about rot. And you're fine as well, Vinny. It I, think will be rot, a... I think the rots do affect robots. Like it, It's it like rots. sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> I got to go back I to hate sand. I was saying before game, Mechton is very <laughs> different rules compared to the other books that we're using. Gotta go back to it. It is weird. I, I chose to play a robot before I fully understood all that it encompassed. It's okay. I don't mind. We've got a nice, diverse group of mutants, animal people, and robots. I think it's cool. We don't no, have any human, humans, though. Oh. Nobody wants to play human here. Bleh. <laughs> I play humans in all the other campaigns. Yeah, boo, Thanks, humans. Dan. <laughs> there are rules to play as like humans in this, but yeah. nobody decided to do that. We all want to be. They're actually pretty cool because like uh, their favorite attribute, if they push a roll, they don't suffer damage. Ooh. It's pretty, it's pretty yeah, damn it's, powerful. It's, it's really powerful. It's it's kind of OP. Hey, Oak, what's going on? Thanks for yep. joining us. Uh, all right, so let's head on out. Did you roll your... Um... I can real quick. I was going to say finding the way. Yes, finding the way. So it's agility <laughs> and the skills, so that's... Okay. So we got Oof. no successes, and he got uh, two ones on his base dice and a one on his skill. So he can roll again. Um, but it would be at, what does this guy have for base dice? Holy crap. He has Six, a five in agility five? and he has a three for finding the path. So even NPC stalkers are actually really good at their job. That's ridiculous. That's really good. So you can roll I again, know. but you're going like, to We don't even need Ken. No. Oh, Ken's listening. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, so, okay. So we want to roll again. You with, can push uh, it, but he's going to take points to, what do you say? It was his wits. Uh, it's agility. So I would re-roll everything, right? No. Take out the two ones. Take out the ones. Okay. So you'd have three base dice, and you'd have all three of your skill dice, and you re-roll. Right. Boom. Two successes. <laughs> Look no, you. Ones. no ones. No so. ones. So no wow. no, no damage. But don't they take the damage? Oh, two I'm original, sorry. right? The two original ones. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The two original ones. Um, okay. Two successes. Well, good job, Sean. Such a mundane name compared to the rest, like Tripod and Dinky and whatever else you called your guys. Uh, kindly was the fixer. I, I liked that. If I ever play a fixer or any kind of like sleazily, I can get you something guy, it's, my name is going to be Kindly. Just ask kindly. kindly. Yeah, would you kindly? Exactly. That's right. So success. You find a safe path and spot any threats in the zones. Stunts. If you have extras... Uh, you find an artifact in the sector if it's there to be found. 
In uh, fact, look at you. I'm going to represent, this triangle is going to represent where you guys are. So you're on, you went due south, I'm going to say. Yeah, where we could potentially access a, uh, assess the general rot level, uh, find some bullets, rations, water. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that these guys can do with a successful roll. But, uh, I mean, if there's an artifact, let's do that. Okay. Good dude. So, you guys head south of the Ark. It is cold. It is brutal. It is blistering. You see signs of no life. You have to be crazy to be out in this weather right now at this point. Um, the ground is three feet high with snow. Um, the oh, roads, geez. like nothing's plowed, nothing's cleared. You guys are just trudging slowly, miserably through the snow. You got Sean. He's pointing the way. He's uh, he's he's uh, Sunny's second best stalker. Uh, and he seems competent. You you seem he seems like he knows what he's doing. He's avoiding the areas where there's potential rot threats, from what uh, you can tell. Uh, the terrain that you guys are going through is a lot of uh, grassland, forest. There's a lot of trees. It's overgrown in this area surrounding the arc, um, just to the south and the east of it, and even the northeast. Uh, so you're making your way through some woods. As you're doing so, you guys travel for roughly two hours and sean stops you and he sees silently he looks turns to you sunny points ahead and points to the sky and you can see some smoke billowing up in the sky and he smart just, he just kind of puts a finger in his oh, mouth smart um <laughs> <laughs> uh, so someone's up ahead fellas and lady uh and lady Anyone want to sneak ahead and uh, take a look? I don't know if I'm your guy for that. I will gladly move forward if you would like. My stealth is questionable. <laughs> but I am willing to move forth. Hey, anybody see Piper? Okay, so I have a question oh, yes. about feral points. Yes. I don't really quite understand how to use them for silence when uh, using feral points for sneaking. You have the book. I don't. Uh, oh. <laughs> you tell me, Jen. No, I have to. I have to open up the. I don't have the PDF open here in front of me. Uh, I have all the other books spread out in front of me, but I'm waiting for that one to arrive. So, what's your question about feral points? And I'll do the best to answer your question. Or we'll do it together. I guess I just don't know how to use a furrow point. I don't so even you... know how many furrow points they have. Okay. Uh, you start with how many powers you have, so you should have two on your sheet. I know oh, that. Okay. That's better than zero. I can't find my book. Where's my gen lab? What the? Yeah. <laughs> Meow. So, um, if I remember right, when you use them, it succeeds automatically. But um, you have to roll to see if it overpowers or whatever it's called. Yeah, if it does some weird stuff. Mm. I'm opening up my PDF right. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you use silent, it'll add plus two your uh, sneak roll in skill dice. Okay, and so other question. For, mm -hmm. Do I use advanced roll and do I calculate yes. like, wits and the skill yes. and that? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. That I can answer. <laughs> you get to roll an F ton of dice. Does that help? Yes. Uh, so looking at your sheet and so would i just put it technically under gear uh no it, it gives you extra skill yes. so whatever skill you have plus two for your uh, power feral points Those are the good dice uh feral points cannot fail neither can you mutations just like mutations um you have feral points to spend beginning every session you begin feral points equal to the number of animal powers you have like adam said so you have two you can gain extras by pushing your dice. You can never have more than 10. Whoa, what happened? Uh, I saw a whole bunch of rolls there. Yeah. 
Um, the first should... one was just a test. Okay. Uh, um, you should have had two more, right? Because uh, it's it's. I don't know. I so did the... the I did one for the advanced role, which is the base and the skill, and then I did one for the feral points, which has its own little die thingy. I'm gonna take a look at the character sheet and let's see if it's got a custom roller. We can also add a skill in there for you, but that's okay. Uh, there's an advanced roller. So is that where you filled it in? Was the advanced roller? I did uh, the base three and yeah. skill two, and then there's one for feral points that has its own die roller. Um, oh. So you, you, you did it all right. Um, it's just that the skill should have been four because you get plus two for silent. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, Adam's correct. So go ahead and put two more dice under skill. It's okay. It's a learning oh. session. We're learning the oh. character sheets. You guys aren't familiar with roll 20. Uh, don't that's don't sweat worse. it. Um, so one. I guess. It's still only... Hmm. Well, you I'm got... Ho I'm hovering over the skill box and I'm still only seeing two in there. Am I, am I reading that right, you guys? If you hover over the boxes, you can see what was actually rolled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see two. I put four in it. You yeah, do. I, I, see I do that. see. I'm looking at your character sheet right now as well. You do have the correct number in there. I'm gonna click it myself. I'm curious. See, it worked there when I hover over. It rolled all of them. Hmm. So go ahead and roll one more time for me, Jen. <laughs> all right. So we got no successes. Fail. No, no, no. It uh, it always. So your no, your feral points always work. You're rolling for for stealth, right? So you failed your stealth roll. You can push it. The only one you have is under skill dice. Remember, skill dice will not go away. Like, you don't take them off. Um, and you can't take damages to your skills. Right. So, mm -hmm. you could re-roll this. You could push it. This is your, You're trying to do stealth, right? You're trying to do a boosted oh, stealth roll. Is that right? So, so, so your, your power automatically turned on. So, you're, like, super quiet and you're slinking in the snow. I and... was doing the wrong roll anyway. Okay. It should be agility, not it's we'll so, get this so what's your agility five all right so let's uh, set up so the rule yeah. on the channel in all my games even with jazz M's damn even here is if i roll it wrong or you roll it wrong doesn't matter if it's success you're gonna roll it correct you're gonna re-roll it uh until you roll it correctly so <laughs> even if it's a failure or a success we, i always make people re-roll it and i even do it to myself um okay that's fair so so that's that's the rule on the channel so we're gonna have you re-roll it with the correct number mm -hmm. of dice in there. So, you, so five you for agility, two for the skill, and then I add two for the... FP. The power, yes. Okay. So it'll be five Nine. agility, four skill. Okay. <laughs> still <laughs> still <laughs> no sixes. Meow. She rolled it correctly. There's no six. She got two ones on her base dice and one one on her skill dice. Nine total. Thank you, Bothram. Um... So you start slinking the snow, and you're like you're almost like walking on top of the snow, and then you bump into a tree, and a bunch of snow falls down, mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody looks, and birds rah, 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 go out the trees. <laughs> you can so there's can... uh there's one last thing. I'm sorry, um, but uh, when she did her mutation, she made a mutation roll and rolled a six on that table. So is that good or bad? That's bad. Uh, she she did that correctly. She did do that correctly. That's bad, isn't um, it? I think it's good, actually. Okay, where's the mutations? What what page number are those on? I thought one was bad. Generally, six is good, one is bad, right? Right, right, right. Let's take a look, though. I got so excited with a failed mutation. or <laughs> uh, uh, Fueling your rage, trauma. There's a table that I'm looking for that tells us what happens when you roll one through six. Uh, it should be towards the beginning of the powers chapter. I'm in the skills chapter. This is the problem with PDFs. You just sit in here, you can hear me clicking. Click, yeah. Click, 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 click. Mm. I need the physical books, damn it. All right, a six. Mm. You connect with your inner beast, and for a moment, it acts in perfect harmony with your human side. You reg regain the feral points you just spent, so give yourself your feral point back, and can yeah. immediately, in the same turn, activate the same power again with the same purpose as the first time or another. So you could double down. You could give yourself four mm -hmm. dice instead of two. Do it on this roll. Like you're just like you're like a you're, you're channeling the snow leopard in you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be five six then. It's yes. Five, four. Holy yes. Crap. Do you want to? Do you want to do that? Yeah. 
Does she lose her hair? No. No. I hope so. Okay, and then do I also have to roll the feral point die again to see if I mess? That is a great up? question. It doesn't say, but I'm going to say no because this is like a bonus. Okay. Like you're you're overpowered, mm-hmm. you overcharge. I'm going to say no. You don't roll it okay. again because that would give you like the chance of failing on a like a good cool Forever success. That'd be silly. Mm-hmm. Um. So no. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> no, we're not going to. I'm not going to do it. Um. That's that's house rule. All right. So now she's rolling. 11 dice? It was 9 previously. Yeah. Did you roll it already? I'm sorry, I wasn't yep, paying attention. I sure did. I got one success. One success. Alright, so you were just about to bump into a tree and you stopped yourself. And you climbed <laughs> up it. <laughs> Stealthily, quietly. And you get up on top of the tree and perched up there. And uh, you can see out in the distance, you see there's a small fire up ahead that's been that's been lit. And it looks like you can see a pack of Oh, five feral dogs sleeping around a fire. And with them, there appears to be um, a couple of, of zone ghouls. Looks like there's just two of the ghouls with them sitting around the fire. Uh, I'm going to go back and let the group know then. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Hell, you even swat a bird while you're up, then you bring it back with you in your mouth if you want. Yes. You rolled so you rolled so good on your feral overcharge. Let's make it cool. So, uh, what's it look like? Is it our boy? I don't think that's our boy. They're uh, kind of creepy looking, and there's two of them. Unless he's split in two. Nah, I didn't hear that he was going out with anyone else. I mean, if it's just two, we could probably sneak up on him and take him. But we probably should, I don't know. Uh, not get in a fight if you don't need to, right? That'd be nice. Oh, oh, hey, Vinny, look what I found. It's a bird. I found a bird. <laughs> oh, look, it's a bird. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good job there, bro. Uh... As uh, I bend over and pick it up as she dropped it at my feet. Uh, thanks for uh, bringing me the bird. Yeah. Word. <laughs> I was waiting for it. You you want it back? No, I'm okay. I'm sure I'll find more. Okay, maybe we can uh, cook it up or something. Uh, it's not a fish. Oh god, he's still alive. <laughs> yeah, it, it splutters in your hands. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so this is where making your rolls are of a benefit. So you have seen this before it saw you. So if you had failed your rolls, there was a chance, or not a chance, you guys would have stumbled on this camp and it would have turned into a different encounter. Mm. Um, so you can go around it. You're not forced. There's not like just one way and it's through these guys and you have the, the heads up. Um, I, again, remember, this is a dangerous place. You typically, if you can, you want to avoid combat, especially in this winter wasteland where it's even worse. So you guys passed your, your finding the way roll. You've passed your stealth roll. You know it's up there. If you'd failed these rolls, you would have just bumped right into this camp. You would have wandered into a clearing. <laughs> they would have been there and they would have raised their guns and we would have entered into an engagement here. So you guys can go around. You know, you, know, you don't have to go through these. You don't have to feel like you have to fight them. Yeah, my vote is we go around. And since my vote's the only matter, we're going around. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Did they have anything, uh, you know, of what? They did have a sack lying next to them at the fire there, though, Piper. There's a sack, but, I mean, who knows what's in the sack? Could be a cat? I mean, you did you want to let it out of the bag? Maybe. Uh, could be. Perhaps we could just set their camp ablaze. Bag included. Bag of cats included. Oh, Could be artifacts. Who knows? Thank you for not bringing doom upon us with your abject failure. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you think we could uh, just swipe the bag and were they all asleep? I, I the dogs? The dogs were huddled? 
all together sleeping. Uh, you couldn't tell you the the two zone ghouls had their backs to you. They're huddled uh, in front of the fire. But the dog, the five of dogs, feral dogs, are definitely asleep. They were dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're a cat. <laughs> If you know anything about uh, Sonny, you know that he is the least stealthy guy you've ever met in your life. He is literally two agility, zero stealth. Just, just letting you know, he's literally the worst. I think Serene Rap could take it on. Sure. I mean, if you guys want to go over there and fight, I, I I'm a lover, not a fighter, as a, as I like to say. No, no, I wasn't. Previous actions indicate otherwise. I wasn't saying fighting. I was just saying swipe in the back. All right. Well, uh, I mean, if, uh, you know, someone's feeling uh, gutsy, they uh, can by all means. And if uh, worse comes to worse, uh, someone sends a grenade launcher in there, right? You did say there might be a cat in the bag. So, yes. All right. Well, uh, hey, Ma. I don't know about the cat in the bag, but just make sure you don't get the cat that's not in the bag, okay? And hey, <laughs> you think you can swipe it, Piper? Because uh, if you run into a little bit of trouble, I got you. There's a dog. The signal will be, oh, God. No, really, like, I got you. Oh, Okay. I can try. All right. Uh, take me to a place where I got eyes, and uh, I'll keep you covered. Yeah, Piper, when you were up in the tree, you saw a path that you could serpentine between the uh, the trees, not making noise. You can get uh, Vinny up there closer. There was okay. a nice there was a nice big rock you could perch up on and get a better vantage point. Of right the, this uh, way, Vinny. Of the camp. All right, so yeah, I'll follow her to mm -hmm. swear I can uh, um, keep an eye out, see what's sure. going on. Okay. Do you want to be alone or do you want to have company? Oh, sure, if you want to come along, Cleaner. Oh, no, I was talking to Vinny, you disgusting flea bag. However, good luck. I. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I got this. Just if you could, you know, hang back a little bit. That way, if uh, I give you a signal, you know, you come up, you uh, do your thing with your launcher, you know. But I got an idea, and that's that's if they wake up. I'm sure it's an astounding one. I can't wait to see it. I almost hope they do wake up. In fact, I will pray for her failure. Nah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, come on, Ma. I can hear you. <laughs> I'm standing I right know here. You can. That's why I said it. <sighs> All right. So, yeah. I'm going to like randomly scratch and just let hair go up into the air and let it drift his way. Chris her way. There you go, cleaner. <laughs> Future stitches for me. <laughs> All right. So we've got Vinny perched up on a rock. Sonny, what are you doing? Uh, what me and uh, Sean will be doing is uh, we'll take a position where we're within short range to cover uh Vinny, in case he gets overran, then we can target whoever's attacking him. Okay. So we're not get so it'd be like here's here's Pepper, here's Vinny, here's us. Pepper. Pepper Potts? No. I don't know why I got Pepper <laughs> like I hear Proudfoot and I'm like, Pepper Potts? No, that's not it. That's not right. I have to look every time. Piper. There we go. <laughs> Mikey I mean, hates names. Yeah, I, I've I been told. I've been told the legend of Mike and how he gets everybody's <laughs> names wrong forever. Uh, I've just witnessed it live, and I love it. It's uh, yeah. this is recorded for everyone now, for forever and ever. Oh, we've been recording for months now. Oh, <laughs> that's right. New. Queen of Embers. Queen of Embers. We got Dunhollow Mysteries. 
Yeah. So good. Okay. Mm. All right. So, Piper, you want to creep up and you want to take that sack full of zone goodies, right? Uh, for the group, yes. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to? Not really, but I will. Go ahead and make me a roll. You're rolling 11 <laughs> dice still, are you not? You have this power activated. I sure hope so. <laughs> Uh, did you take any damage from? She she once? never actually pushed it. Oh, okay, yep. that's fantastic then. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. she got one success on eleven dice. Yay! Is that good? Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some rolls here. Uh, let's see what happens. Are you happy with one success, Piper? Or do you want to push that? What's the worst that could happen? You could get mauled <laughs> by a pack of dogs. I could have no success. I guess I want to know what one means before you decide. Uh, well, you always keep the one success. Yeah. Oh. You would just roll ten more dice and then take any ones that hit you. <laughs> Did that cat just Naruto run across the screen? Yeah. Here comes the <laughs> <tail> again. <laughs> Naruto, Naruto across the screen. <laughs> Naruto Rana. All right, so. All right, Piper. You're slinking up in the snow. You're like on top of the snow. You're not even leaving little footprints. You're, you're in your element. And you get close. And you get really close. You're in the tree line right behind them. And you can hear these ghouls snoring. As you, you know that ghouls don't like sunlight. That's why they're wearing cloaks. They're all covered up. You can't see their face. You can't see their hands. Their hands are all bandaged up. Um, so during the daytime, this is typically when they sleep. So they're bundled up. They're bundled up next to each other. They got a sack between the two of them. They got the, the five dogs are lying there. The zone, zone dogs. I said they're feral dogs, zone dogs. And they're all kind of like lying next to one each other as well to keep warm and nice and close to the fire you get nice and close and you're, you're cautious and they they you're right on the edge of the camp and nobody seems to notice or move or murmur um lying next to these um these ghouls are bike chains it looks like they carry those as as weapons and you can see slingshots hanging from their from the belts of their their cloaks you don't see any other weapons on them. They go in there and remove that sack from between the two yeah, of them. I'm gonna move in with this sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get in there and you 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 slide the sack away a little bit between the two of them. And you watch and you wait to see if there's movement. One of them just grumbles as you pull it away, and the, they can feel the weight kind of shift between the two of them. It shifts. And uh, start backing up then. <laughs> yeah, and you're pulling the the sack with you. You're pulling the snow, and it's leaving a trail in the snow. But you successfully free them of this sack of goods, whatever these items are that they're carrying with them that they had between the two of them. But uh, you do leave a tr clear trail in the snow back to wherever you go of this sack <laughs> that you drag. So you are leaving no tracks, but there's like this indent in the snow all the way back. Is the bag making noises? No, it's not making noises on the snow. Does it snow there in Kansas City? I don't even know. Do you guys yes. know what snow oh, is? Yeah. Do you oh, know yes. what snow is? <laughs> Says we get the a lot Canadian. of ice too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't snow as much as Canada, but we get we get some ice too. Okay. Yeah, so it's just it's gliding on the snow, but it leaves an indentation, and you bring it back to the group. Vinny, you're watching perched up there and you're 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 a little unsure you're like ready you you your your trigger finger gets a little close to firing but you, you hold off see piper's okay and uh, she drags this stuff back and you guys have a, a sack of so he's impressed stolen from a group of uh some ghouls sonny's impressed yeah sonny's impressed he'll like slow like soft clap you know <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Excellent. You have procured your, you have procured goods. Thank you so much. Also, what a giant trail you have left behind you. Well, 
Perhaps you should carry it then, Kleena. You're stronger. You won't you won't have to drag it across the ground. I would be happy to make up for her shortcomings. It's a rather large sack. I'm just saying. Yeah, what's That's in what it? Yeah, said. that is what she's saying. It is a rather large sack. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, so you crack this thing open. And uh looks like there's a couple of like open cans of food in here, kind of rotting and no good. Um there's some empty bottles of water. There's a couple cans of soda pop that have not been opened that you guys can salvage and take back. So two cans of soda pop. I don't know what you guys call it down there. You call it soda. You call it pop. Sodi pop. Um, Go deep in stuff and it's all Coke. Coca-Cola. Uh, you guys do find... Who's, who's writing this down? Yeah, someone make note of this. You find one can unopened of a canned salmon. You find two bullets. And let's roll. There's there is something shiny in there. There's some sort of zone mm-hmm. artifact within this mm-hmm. sack. Someone roll me 3d6. Roll them individually, because it's a d666 that we're doing here. Uh, so roll them individually, and we're going to see on the table what we get for ourselves as a zone artifact. I think Pepper should do it, since she stole mm-hmm. it. It's true. Roll me 3D. Roll one at a time. So there's a die roller on the left-hand side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or pipe. Damn it, every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She's just a cat. She doesn't have feelings. Okay, he calls me Alexa in the other game. Like, I'm just going to ask me another question afterwards. Alexa, play me a song. <laughs> you uh, have a red felt round hat. It's a red beret that you found that's in there. Um, to look up what that actually does. But yes, it's a red beret. It's this like felt round hat. You kind of just fits on top of your head. You take it, you put it on. It doesn't go all the way. It doesn't cover your ears. You're kind of like, oh, what's the use of this in winter? Stupid hat. Would you say it's a raspberry beret? <laughs> hey, uh, let me <laughs> s- let me see that. I think Once this would look that good is. on a, a French cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, can I uh, comprehend it? Yes, please do. <laughs> Can you comprehend it? Share your mysteries with me, strange felt <laughs> It was once worn by a prince. I don't even see it listed on the stuff, on the artifacts. I don't even think it, it gives you any bonuses. I think it's literally just a hat. I, ain't, I, I don't understand it. Oh, you know what? What table? <laughs> uh, I was looking. At, I was looking at scrap. Sorry, that's not what it was. Oh no! It's a little. It's a little pill bottle of some sorts. There's a label on it that's kind of ripped away, uh, so you can't make out what it is. But it's a little pill bottle. You shake it, and it sounds like yeah, there's some pills in there. But you are mm-hmm. unable to determine what they are. Hey, uh, hey, Vincent, mm-hmm. do you want to push that roll? <laughs> do I? Let's see what those ones are. Oh my no. god! Oh my no god! <laughs> it's four ones. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> Yeah, it's a little plastic bottle full of full of pills of some sort. You've seen these before. You know it's medicinal purposes. You just don't know what. Yeah, Adam has seen a lot of them lately. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you've seen these. <laughs> no, no, no. Vincent hasn't. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll hold on to these, all right? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> rattle, rattle. Jen says we'll have to go back and rewatch to get the exact numbers. Yeah, if you want, you can meta game. You can see what they are. Um, but... Yeah. So you successfully take this sack of goods from the zone ghouls, and you 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 make it through the zone. You guys clear the zone. Um, there's one level of rot that's unavoidable. So, Uh-oh. Piper, go ahead and mark that down. You've got one rot. I don't think you can resist because you don't have a rot suit. And my my man, Cleaner, what do you have for rot on your sheet? Because rot has to affect you somehow. Like uh, Sunny said, it gets into everything. 
Yeah, I've got a rod situation here. I've got one. Okay. And then oh, the so rod is passive. Uh, the rod suits. I thought so. I thought that's cool. what I read. It was that they are passive. Cool. But you're th you're th you're saying you got to roll gear. I don't know. That's that's one thing I didn't look at. I looked at a lot of other the things. Rot. Here, let's go to the rot section. This is our first. It's our first session. We're yeah, like page one twenty six, I think. The rat. Because rot suit rating protection three against rot. Page one twenty six. We go there. This Your heads can make them. Uh, you get to roll three gear dice every time you suffer a rot point. Mm -mm. Okay, so roll me your roll me your gear. Sunny's tinfoil suit may may disintegrate. Sean, oh, it, it will after he uses it. You're gonna hear about this when we get back. <laughs> Shan. So it should just be gear, Mike. So like, Adam rolled his correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, oh, I got rid of the skill, but I did not get rid of the base. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll draw again. And I got one success. So it successfully okay. shielded you from the rot in this zone. But in doing so, it uh, it deteriorates as you make your way through. And as the tape gives and the tinfoil starts to fall yeah. off. And so it goes down to away. two? I think it's gone. Is that no, no, it's gone. Oh, gone it's completely. broken, broken. Okay. Yeah. One good I didn't know if it just went like down. You couldn't repair mm -hmm. it back up. But okay. No, that's... That's what mine does. Oh. Yeah. Um, if I roll ones. But yeah, like one success on a jury rig is like a one-time use. That's it. So mm. you're shielded from that one rot. Yeah, I mean, it's still good. So Hey, it's one less rot. Do you want to head west, south, or southwest from here? Your little triangle, right? I'm moving you along. You've got an X of where Tarkov may be. Where do you want to go next? You went due south from the arc. Where do you want to go from here? Do you want to go south again? What what what, what region or area do you want to go into? Oh, and just, uh, just so I, you know that my suit didn't protect me, so I took a rot point. Okay. Yeah. So it's Sunny, uh, since he's best buddies with Tarkov, he actually has uh, some of his. Uh, he's smart enough to grab some of his clothing because he actually has the mutant uh, ability known as Tracker. Yeah. And so he's going <laughs> to use his mutant power. Yes. To try to uh, to try to follow the trail of Tarkov to give us an idea because we know we went south, but we wouldn't need, need to go where from here. So uh, that's awesome. feral power. Now we're gonna see a mutant power. I love it. So uh, I just do I just do it and I just take the one mutant point for it. Take the one mutant point. You, it happens, and then you have to roll like Jen did. You have to roll your D six six for it. Yeah. Uh, submit. Five. But it always succeeds. That's that's the, the thing. Nice. What does a five get us? Let's go to the mutations chapter. This one I have the physical one in front of me, so it's much easier to navigate. Uh, five. The mutation changes your appearance in some way. You choose how. The effect is only cosmetic, but it's permanent. Sunny, Sunny, what happened? Sunny's nose grows a little bit bigger. Like it's, it's like it's noticeably bigger. Like nose <laughs> bigger. But shh, I'm here all night, folks. Anyway, yeah. So I think that's the cosmetic thing that's from since he's using the sense of smell to track that uh, that happens here. And which which power was it? I'm sorry. Tracker. Tracker. On page seventy-seven. Thank you. I think he goes bald, says Boffrin. His hair just immediately falls out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I lose all my hair. Okay, I'm cool with that. I'll take that instead of a bigger nose. While he's initially kind of figuring out which way he wants to track, I had a, a brief idea to do on the side. Uh, drag the sack in a direction the opposite way of where we're going. Yeah. And then clean up my own footsteps as I come back to you. <laughs> That's okay. fantastic. So four hours have passed. That's a really good idea. Four hours have passed. You guys don't need to eat yet. You need to eat and drink once a day, so you're fine. Okay. Um, we have to roll for rot at the end of the day. It's not the end of the day yet. So your 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 big old schnoz. Um, 
The nose knows. Senses that he went west from here. And you pick up the trail. You guys break from what was once woods and grass and foresty areas. And it starts to break off now into... There's like what's left remnants of like concrete or, or um, cement streets here and there. It's it's all pitted. Um, there's snow on everything, but you, so you can't really see it. But uh, you, you've been around here before and there's like remnants of houses. Like this looks like it was once a, a residential like suburban block. There's like uh, just just shells and hulls left of what was once rows and rows of identical prefab houses. You guys are making your way through the zone. Let's go ahead and have um, Sean, Sean, make us a roll here. All Cleaner right. was mentioning it has an effect. What were, Sorry, what was the effect you were mentioning, Cleaner? The chat was saying something about you mentioning. Something about an effect. I don't know what it was. Uh, Who are you asking? Uh, cleaner, Jeremy. Well, I mean, he can clean an area, but okay. it's like a 10, 10 meter by 10 meter area that I can reduce the rot by one. Oh, but okay. I don't really know how that plays out with like the course of traveling. Like, that, so, I'm new to this. No, that, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, there's something that's called a rot know. eater. And that's why I was asking if you're a rot eater and they'll yeah. literally eat rot. Um, which like is, I could clean a spot that we're going to camp at, but that doesn't do anything about what we've walked through the whole day. Exactly. Exactly. Again, like think of it in terms of radiation. You're still, yeah, you're still picking it up. It's still permeating through you. So I can you help could clean, clean up an area. So if you were in an area, time, say say you found something, you found a house or a building, yeah, and there was something in there you wanted, but it was just like riddled with rot. Then I'd say you could use that to like clean and disinfect the rot in that area to lower it. From to work in uh, that's yeah where i see it coming into play i could be wrong. i agree because it, it's not going to protect you during the middle of traveling right and you're just constantly doing a 10 by 10 the whole time yeah okay uh so sean so sean uh no failed successes. to get any successes uh i'm gonna have him push it because so far push we have it, not sean. push it sean One push it real good Tarkov here finally <laughs> No. Oh my God, Sean. Sean, no, no, no base dice. So one, so he tries, but he just, you know, in the snowstorm, I guess he just can't figure it out. And I'm trying to point him in the general direction, but I, I'm not a stalker, so I don't know the path to go. So it's starting, it's starting to snow a little bit, and it's starting to blow, and Sean's getting disoriented, and he's, he's, he's like, oh, we gotta go this way, boss. It's this way, and then he, he goes, you know, a few meters that direction. He goes, no, 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 it's all, it's all wrong. And you're like, Sean, it's this way. I can smell him. You're taking us down the wrong path. He's like, oh, okay, boss, boss, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's just, he's kind of all over the place, and he's unsure about himself, and he's disoriented, and um, you're getting really annoyed with him. <laughs> and everybody else picks up on this, and it's a little awkward. Yeah, you're calling him names, you're putting him down. I don't know. I don't know how you treat your guys. Maybe not. But it's a little awkward. You're like, Sean, Sean. You point your, your extra large nose now that has just grown. Everybody's seen it, uh, <laughs> but nobody's saying anything about it. It's a little awkward. Your nose is like... <laughs> gotten i don't know bulbous or something i don't know <laughs> um and just kind of keep pointing at it yeah. sean, sean it's that way the nose knows sean you know this all right you start calling He's him that way you don't even, you don't even call him his name anymore <laughs> uh, uh, uh boss yeah yeah okay sorry boss sorry sorry uh yeah can you just point me in the right direction and um we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll go that way and so all right you, you're, you're like, Sean, go that way. And he starts, he's he's going through. And you guys are going through. And again, there's more and more of these houses. And you get to like what was once an intersection. You see a crossroads. And um, at this, at uh, one of the sides of this crossroads, it looks like there's a long rectangular building. There's many doors and fronts on it. it looks like there may have been uh, many storefronts at one time to this thing. And you're walking along. And Sean's like, hey, we should look for uh, look for some supplies over there while we're here, boss. It looks like uh, those are always those are always good for, for grub. He ain't wrong. You want me to go first, boss? I... No, nah, that's what... Uh... Let me pull up her name real quick before I fuck it up. That's what Piper's <laughs> for. <laughs> Flea oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That's right, boss. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering me. But well, we all have our roles to play, and that's I your feel role. Like Sean should go first. Sean's trying to still figure out which way to go. So, <laughs> in that, 
you take some time um pilfer all right hey, hey y'all uh, could go in i'll hang behind and watch you huh yeah so the lost city's got my back i do so you guys are sitting there chatting and as you're chatting and you're just like okay hey, piper you go and sean's like oh, i'll go boss i'll go i don't mind all of a sudden behind you you hear a voice uh it's like hello what are you doing here you turn around and you see this odd looking fellow he's got he's got bug eyes he's got like messed up teeth uh he's wearing a he's wearing a a, a trucker's hat he's got uh, a parka on and uh he's just like hey what are you guys doing uh so we're looking for our friend oh yeah uh yeah you from around here yes good maybe you know the area our buddy uh tarkov uh he was out here scavenging for supplies uh i'm pretty sure he went like that way you have any idea what and i'll point in the general direction i believe he went what that way is he's standing there his mouth's agape it's kind of like drooling and he's 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 trying really hard to keep up with what you're saying he's... do you know what is that way ah uh, my house Ah, oh, that's interesting. Hey, uh, you want to take us to your house, huh? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know if mommy and daddy dearest would appreciate that. I don't. I don't know how they'd feel about visitors. You want to go? <laughs> we could go and ask them. Okay, okay. You want to meet my brothers and sisters? How many people are at your house? He takes it both hands and he starts like, I don't, I don't know. It's That's just a my big pack. It's 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 my mom and dad and and my brothers and sisters. It's it's warm there. Hmm. What are you doing here? I, I've never seen you before. And we've never seen you before either. Serendipity. <laughs> Do you come here often? What is that? And he's all again, amazed by a cleaner. It dawns on him. And then he sees Piper. What the? What is that? <laughs> Looking at this. So, this... yeah. Well, while we're talking to this guy, I want to kind of get a feel on him. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, potentially sense emotions and stuff like that. But, uh, one... or, or. Yeah, sense emotion. Yeah, I'll do that real quick back up everybody uh, can if you want to like assess this fella you can all roll it oh okay so not not just sunny you're look, looking this this weird guy over like see so wearing truckers hat he's a parka he's a really goofy looking guy uh i'll try to interact strange looking fella like i said he's got bug oh eyes. no is it is what it is those... probably i think uh bug eyes messed up teeth drooling just kind of staring off into space he's having a really hard time keeping up with you guys why are y'all scared of me? He's uh in his like mid thirties. He's an adult. What oh that's a big kitty. She is. She also sheds everywhere. She will make your home a mess. We got we got dogs back at the house, but not like that. Yeah, that's so I got wonderful. one success. He loves dogs. Oh, you got one success, and Jen got one success. All right. Uh, he seems like he seems like a pretty simple fella. Uh, he seems pretty genuine. Uh, he, he he doesn't seem malicious in his intentions. He seems genuine when he's like, "Do you want to come meet my family? It's warm." Um, looking him over though, he doesn't appear to have any mutations on him. Oh, uh, I thought he literally had bug eyes. No, no, no. He's just a. Just a, a weird looking dude. No, he doesn't. Have, no, not like like fly eyes or insect eyes. He's just got like bug eyes. One of them's like crossed. And have we have we ever really interacted with zone ghouls before? Like, would we know if this no? Is a... Well, he so ghouls. You would know what a ghoul is. Ghouls are notorious. They're like the the common. They're like the goblin of this world. Oh, okay. right. So like everybody knows what a zone ghoul is. And like I was saying earlier, when Piper encountered them, 
they 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 cannot stand sunlight like they'll 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 burn up in sunlight they're very very mm. clear translucent skin um so they're always bundled up they're always wearing cloaks they've got like their hands and feet are always wrapped their faces are wrapped um so this guy's just walking around he's got a hat on and a coat and he's he, he is not a ghoul okay yeah 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 we can go uh if it's in the same direction uh, can't hurt to go but uh yeah, go ahead and lead the way. Sonny, you can you you're picking up sense of Tarkov on this guy. Oh. Hmm. I'll keep that close to my chest for sure. a second here. I can't forget about your your power you activated. Yeah, you're you're picking up picking up a little bit of Tarkov hmm. emanating off of him. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind to keep myself a little weary, but I wouldn't want to say anything to his face just right now because I want to get a better read on him, essentially. Sure. Okay, you guys want to come home? We got uh mommy. Mommy Dearest and Daddy Dearest can make us a nice big supper. It's getting late. Sure. Okay, let's go. And he starts walking through the streets, and he's not—he's not carrying like a gun or anything. He's just charging along and just very oblivious. Just seems like he's just living life, living life to the fullest. He's—he's he's just a happy dude. This is just the norm to him. Um. So he takes you guys down some residential streets. And like I said, a lot of the houses are just just decimated. Like they've just, time has ravaged them. Uh, but eventually you get further down the street and you get to, um, it's a really big building. Uh, it's a two-story building there and it's abandoned. And it's all boarded up and stuff. But on the other side of it, there's a field. And on the other side of the field, is a, is just, there, you can see like a large house. Um, like everything else is crumbling and ruins around it, but there's a perfectly intact house on the other side of this field. Um, it's a homestead surrounded by a high wooden fence and barbed wire across the top. And he goes, oh, that's, that's home. That's where we all live. That's pretty nice. Yeah. You guys get closer. There's a, uh, there's a massive iron gate um, on the, on the fence. And you see a large white brick house with thick closed iron shutters as you get closer. Hmm. As you get even closer, you can hear dogs growling and barking. Oh, there must be playing in the yard. You don't mind, do you? And he turns to Piper. Uh, Cat lady? No, not really. Are they friendly? You talk? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still have my claws. Okay. I've never seen one of these. Yeah, I mean as long as they ain't gonna, you know, act out of act out of line when we come around. I mean, are they friendly to strangers? Uh maybe. Maybe. I don't know how comfortable I am with that. I don't I'll do my best. We'll we'll put them in the house. All right. So, you guys get close. You get up on the house and he get to the gate and you can see in, in the gate. Now you can clearly see the house in the yard. Um, the back of the yard, you can see like, even though it's snow, it's winter. There's like plastic lawn furniture that's set up over there. And you see, there's like a, what looks to be a, a teenage, uh, kid sitting out there, boy sitting out there at one of the tables, just hanging out. Um, you also see that, um, there's a garden, like a planter in front of the house. It's all covered in snow at this point. Uh, there's a ragged blue and yellow flag waving on it on the flagpole. Uh, you also see in the middle of the yard, there is a giant plastic beast. It's a statue of some sort. It's up on two legs. It's got these two little tiny arms out and a long tail and a big head with fang, with massive fangs in it. And it's just this, this big plastic statue of this like reptilian beast in the middle of their yard. I've never seen anything quite like it. What is that? Uh, I don't know. Was she when the when we moved in? We play on it. It's fun. Yeah, uh, you say so. Sure, I believe you. Yeah. So as you guys are standing at the gates, you'll see there's a long driveway, and parked in the driveway is uh like a camper or winnebago and this thing's like decked out it's got armor all over it um just sitting there in the uh in the in the park in the uh in the driveway in front of their uh their garage and he goes um hold on i'll uh 
I'll uh, I'll go in there and I'll go talk to Mummy and Daddy Dearest, and uh, you stay here, okay? Sure, sure thing. Okay, you stay here. Uh, what was his name again? His name, his name is oh, he goes. I'm Ezekiel. Oh, nice to meet you, Ezekiel. I'm Sunny. Hi, Sunny. Just like your disposition. Exactly. <laughs> it's a big word for him. Uh, <laughs> and he, uh, he, uh, he goes to the gate, and there's like a a, a code box. He punches in a code, doo, 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 and then <laughs> the gate rattles open. The su- the driveway's been cleared, so it's clearing the snow. And he goes on the other side, and it remains open. You can see dogs barking, running out towards him. There's three dogs, pit bulls, running out towards him, barking and. He holds up his hands and they jump on him and they start petting them and they're rolling around and they're all happy and they see the group of you and they start snarling at the group of you standing at the gates. Um, He heads towards the front door of this house, this nice, beautiful, white brick house. And you notice something odd, actually, that you didn't notice before, hanging next to the door. You see that there's a like a makeshift cage that is hanging oh like five feet off the ground and within the cage you see like a, a huddled mass you see someone or something in there does it smell familiar it smells a lot like tarkov ah these sons of bitches uh, I'll, I'll lean over to these guys and uh hey uh i'm, I'm pretty darn sure that's tarkov in there yeah yeah I could smell it on the guy. For... So that's why I was okay or keen to follow him. For you to lead us right there, and I think he'd let us right there. Mm. Uh, now, one thing I want to notice about the cage, is it metal? It is. Hmm. So maybe he's hurt, because if that thing was metal, he'd just be able to bust out. Query, oh. if we notice him... Can and we know he is caged. Oh, what? sorry. No, that's a good point. Sorry. His power is magnetism. Remember? He's like Magneto. That's his mutant yeah. power. Yeah. He's flipping Magneto. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Cleaner. Sorry. I just thought of that. I didn't even realize that he's Magneto. If we know it's him and we know they have caged him, perhaps we should move quickly before they have time to assemble. Book it, as it were. What do we do about these dogs? That's the only thing I'm worried about. If I blow them comes... up right now if we are going to go. Say the word and I blow them up and we move. <laughs> are to we Sonny. moving now? It's up to Sonny. I mean, it, Kleena makes a good point. Uh, we could try to make a clean getaway uh, if we move now. But uh, generally, I like to use my Sonny disposition to get out of situations. But uh, I don't know. I mean, if there's going to be a fight breaking out, it's going to be mostly you guys on the line. So, uh, your choice. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, if there was, like, what if they was going to have him for dinner? What if they're that type of uh, family? I mean, it's true. I don't think there is any um, reasonable, I don't think there's any friendly reason to put him in a cage. Uh, I'm going to start looking around and see if there's, like, anything like a trash can lid or a sign or something like that that I could fashion into a shield quickly. Yeah, that's a good... Because um, I feel like violence is about to happen. <laughs> Stuff's what I want to do uh, is I want to try to get the dogs because uh, are they still growling at us? Yeah, they are. They're looking at you guys. They're on the, the yard and they're growling at you. They haven't come any further uh, but they are growling at you. Because uh, I potentially want to manipulate the dogs into like basically calming down uh, by offering some rations, some grub to them. Because I got uh, I got nine grub on me. You do have nine grub. You also have that can of salmon that you picked up in the uh, wastelands. Without a can opener, damn! Oh wait, you got cleaner here. Cleaner could open it. Yeah, we got a portable can opener. <laughs> but it's fish. It's the good kind. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could we could let Piper have it for doing such a good job and getting us these as I clack the. The... Oh, fine. We just let Tarkov die so you can eat some fish. It's you like would say that. paradise fish. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my plan to help. Kind of, If we're going to try to sneak past these dogs, uh, the best way to do it is uh, to bribe them to your side, right? 
I could pretend to nonchalantly be cleaning their driveway as I move closer to Target. It's simply my programming. I can't help it. Hmm. Good idea, Ma. Um, yeah, so I'm going to look and see if there's anything I can scrounge up. If not, I'm going to um, forget about it. Yeah, make me. we're going to do a roll here. Um, make, make me a, what is it, comprehend roll or whatever that you used for the last one when you tried to scrounge stuff together? Uh, it's jury rig. Jury rig. Make me a jury rig roll. There is, so... You guys wouldn't know what this looks like, but for us, the viewers and the players, this looks like an everyday suburban house, suburbia house. Like, like nothing's happened. Like, they're not living in the waste. There's, like, garbage cans out front with garbage in it. There's their holiday vehicle parked in the driveway. There are dogs. There are whatever. Kids are playing in the yard. Like I said, there's plastic furniture. There's a big T-Rex uh, <laughs> statue in the middle of the yard. Uh, and it seems like they're living oblivious. A, a happy life of suburbia in the middle of this wasteland. Uh, so yeah, you you do find that there's trash cans lying about and they leave a the treasure, even though nobody takes it away. It disappears. It's probably zone ghouls or zone dogs or whatever. <laughs> but they put the trash out and it disappears every week. So they think there's somebody's doing something with it. Uh, so yeah, you find a, a, a lid for a trash can. Okay, so I, uh, I grab the trash can lid. It's going to be a one-time use shield. Okay. Because um, I, got, I got one success. Okay, so you're standing there. You got a trash can lid uh, in front of you. Uh, what were you uh, doing, Sonny? What were you using your mutant power for? I'm sorry to convert. The I'm dogs. not using my mutant power. I was gonna uh, try and manipulate the dogs by offering them grub. The dogs. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to like feed them to help uh, Sonny up their disposition to us. So that way, if someone were to walk past and try to take a look, better look at that cage, they wouldn't immediately attack. Okay. Uh, so you're just going to take some of your grub and uh, toss it over there? Just one yeah, I'm like, hey, uh, come over here, uh, you, you damn beautiful pooch, you know. <laughs> you damn beautiful pooch. You toss it over there, and uh, yeah, yeah, they're going to they're gonna start eating away out of this stuff. So they start fighting. What do you toss over there? Uh, I'm trying to think of what kind of grub I'd have on me, but I mean, it's be like non-perishable stuff or whatever you've cooked over in the ark. It's up to you. It's a lot of canned goods still, right? Or whatever you kill and cook jerkies and things like that. I don't know. Things that would last. Oh. Right. I mean, I probably got some decent level stuff on me cause I'm a boss. So I probably pull out some sort of meat product, you know, we don't know what <laughs> it is, but it's meat product. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll just go ahead and like open up a can of that and, uh, Yep. Oof. Sure. Sure. Canned. Maybe jarred. Because you guys a little are spam. Jarred. Something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you fling it over. Ah, <clears throat> uh, dang it! I keep forgetting my uh, my talent for creating things. I'll do that next time. This is what you're built for, Vinny. Yeah. You literally yeah. have one thing you do. All right. <laughs> yeah, you keep forgetting <laughs> your one purpose in life, Vinny. <laughs> so well, the the rules are you re-roll if you messed up your roll, bud. But he didn't mess up his jury rig roll, did he? He got that right. You got a, he's got no, a trash no, that, can that, lid. That's what was messed up, is that I should have added two dice. Oh, re-roll it. Yeah, okay. Re-roll it. Yeah, um, that's the rule. And shot of tequila. Just kidding. No, <laughs> that was last night. All right. Well, I got to do advanced rolls for this, because... Uh, Gear? Yeah. yeah. The character no, no, sheet no. could use some work. I will say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the ter worst thing I've ever seen. No, the Forbidden it's Lands one is more functional, and our good friend Wes made it. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Talked about making a Mutineer Zero one. There is another one available, and I like it. I think it's more functional, but it doesn't have robots oh. and animal people on it, just mutants. So Boom. This one. Oh, no, uh, the rubber band broke. <laughs> only if you push it. Oh, only if I, okay. So right, your rubber cool. band's still intact, but it's like... <laughs> It's like, like stretch, you know, it's like white when you stretch it from a band too far and it's like ready to snap and you're just like, ah, hold together, hold together, hold together. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you got three successes. Oh, nice. So the ritual. first two make it permanent and then on a shield. Um, stunts. 
The toughest trash can lid ever. <laughs> it's know. a titanium trash can. It's going to be the thing it's of like legend. You're going to go Captain back. America symbol on the bottom of it. <laughs> you find Captain America shield? <laughs> <laughs> and they were just throwing it out. Yeah, they just tossed they it out. They, had. they were oblivious. One man's trash. It doesn't say about shields, but it says that armor it increases by one. And that's basically what shields do is yeah, their yeah, armor. Is armor. So, okay, so I guess it's worth four now instead of three. Four dice? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Uh, a shield, yeah, its normal armor rating is three. So, Oh, my God. This, yeah, this trash is, can lid got amazing. This thing's going to go back, and it's going to be like uh, an artifact within the arc <laughs> when you go back, right? This, this Nice. Shield. All right, yeah, this is what you do, Vinny. All right, so you toss this this grub over there, and they start fighting over it, gnawing it up, and barking and snapping at each other. And as they do this, the, the kid that was sitting over on that plastic furniture starts to come on over, and he's shuffling along. He's kind of dragging one foot, and he gets close, and you see he's, oh, probably in his teens. And he's got the same goofy look as the, the Ezekiel that you met earlier. Same kind of, exact same features, and bug eyes and terrible teeth and just just a goofy looking specimen of a person and uh he gets over there and he starts breaking them up and oh calm down calm down stop it hey kid uh, how's uh, it going I'm what's your name i'm moving my name's ollie who are you i'm sunny i'm not supposed to talk to strangers so sully it's sunny and now we're not strangers because you know me yeah, you ain't supposed to talk to me. Uh, I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> da Daddy dearest! Daddy dearest! He starts shouting. I'm going to go and start moving towards Tarkov. <laughs> You're just going on the property. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as as he starts shouting, the door, front door swings open and standing there is Ezekiel. And, uh, and, a, and a man, he looks like he's in his 60s. And... Um, He's, uh, these kids definitely look like him. Uh, you can tell where they get his, their looks. He also looks a little bit goofy, but not as much as the rest of them. And, uh, him and Ezekiel standing there and he's holding a hunting rifle. He goes, what the hell's going on here? Who, you, are you the ones Ezekiel brought back for dinner? Uh, yeah, my name's Sonny. Uh, what's your name? My name's Daddy Dearest. And when yeah. he says, when he says brought back for dinner, <laughs> can I sense emotion on that? Sure. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <sighs> nope. Do you want to push it? Uh, it's important. So, yeah. You got no ones. Donner party of four. <laughs> this is buffering. <laughs> Two successes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's a yeah. There's a, there's a little bit more to it when he says that the ones you brought back for dinner. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with the stunts, there's specific questions I can ask you. Oh yeah, because you've got extra successes. See, this is something yeah. that's yeah. not in Forbidden Lands, and I I like that they've removed it. It's neat, but I think it's a little messy. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah personally that's just me i'm not saying it's, uh, oh it's bad but uh, it just seems like more to keep track of like oh i've got two or three successes so now i can do mm -hmm. x y and z um instead of yeah. just like hey i'm just gonna add to your successes and make it even better like that's how they kind of okay. gloss over it in that one but so for every so uh, you must reveal the npc's most powerful emotion at this point in time hate fear contempt love etc and then um <laughs> hate uh, fear contempt Really? And then hunger. The yeah, stunt, I was gonna say, say hunger. <laughs> he is hungry. The stunt I am going to choose is does he want to hurt me? <laughs> Do you really want yes. to hurt <laughs> I know I was thinking <laughs> yes. That. Yes, he does. Yes. Just tell me. Just tell okay. me. Just give the word. You hey, just Ma 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 He's gonna eat me. <laughs> Don't you touch my darling boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's so, initiative. <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, hold on. 
Hold on. Oops. I did not expect us to do this here. Um, so okay. bear with oh, me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, it's on, huh? <laughs> oh, it's it, apparently because like Donkey Kong. All right, there's gonna be a kid, a man. I'm just setting up a, a map here, a makeshift map. It's of a storefront, but it'll work for this yard. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, let's use that guy for Daddy Dearest. That's that's happening. Uh... Uh... And these ninjas can be his kids. What? No, I'm just using things to represent them. Don't worry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, they're, no ninjas. they're not really ninjas. Don't worry. I'm just using makeshift. Okay, ones. I would honestly be super hyped for fighting some ninjas with a robot. Oh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. So and there's a dinosaur, that. too. Like, it's the trifecta. Dinosaurs, ninjas, and robots. And it's, mutants. So this is oh, hi. This is Can I get on the top of uh, Ma and, and use it as, like, a mech? You know, that way we have mechs as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a makeshift map, um, but it'll do the trick. So I have the group of you here. We're going to say that's the gate. That's the fence you're standing in is is um, where you're at. Mm. Here. <laughs> it's a fence. Um, you've got the yard in between you and them or the driveway. You've got three dogs here. And then standing here is Daddy Dearest and uh, Ezekiel at the door. I know mm. people can't see this saying here, but I'm giving you guys, I'm giving a representation and then the cage is right beside uh, Ezekiel. So mm. you've got, you've got a distance here where you've got some dogs between you and you've got the two of them and you guys are all standing at the gate except for Cleaner who's like part way up. Cleaner is like re ready to go this whole time and it's not held back. So I will give Cleaner that. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. <laughs> These people give me the skeebies. So we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. There's a button for it on your character sheet. I'm going to do a single initiative for all my bad guys. You roll a D6. So this is something else between this and Forbidden Lands. And I was tempted to house rule this. And I was going to play it vanilla the first time. And I was going to ask you guys what you want to do. So in this one, you roll a D6 and you just put it on there. That's what your initiative score is. In Forbidden Lands, you use a deck of 10 cards and everybody draws a card so you can't have the same numbers once that four has been drawn the four is gone right so everybody you're always drawing at the beginning of combat um from a deck of cards you're gonna get a different number every time instead of a, a random roll uh and you don't have any duplicates and i kind of like the deck of one through ten more than i do a random d6 but i wanted to see what you guys like and what works for you All right. Yeah, I accidentally rolled twice, but yeah. Initial. So agility is the tiebreaker here. So the person with the higher agility goes before the other one. All right. So what do I have? You guys. I would like to Go ahead. spend a feral point for fast reflexes to increase my initiative by two. Okay. Roll me a d6 for spending a feral point. Your animal side is completely suppressed and your human side takes over. This means you lose all of your feral points and you're unable to gain more. You could push as usual, but won't gain any feral points. You cannot use the dominate skill and the effect lasts D6 days, not hours. Holy crap. Oh, so your mutation is going to happen, right? Because that's how, or feral, it always happens. It goes off. You can't fail, but you're, you're becoming a little bit more human and a little less cat for roll me a D six. Let's see how many days this takes effect for. Wow. You can't oh, use man. feral points for, uh, or gain feral points for six days. Oh no. Oh my God. Ah! <laughs> now I'm rolling good tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> So you can push as usual, but you're not going to gain any feral points for pushing. And you lose all of them. That's insane. Oh, hey, my. She got to add two to her initiative, right? <laughs> yeah, but she gets to go faster. Uh, so what was your initiative roll? It's five, so it'll be a seven. All right. <laughs> Shout it out to me. Um, Cleaner, what do you got? Six. Sunny? 
Uh, three. Vinny? Three. And my guy's got a one? Yeah, my agility's one higher than uh, Sonny. Yep, I got a two. <laughs> you see the chat there, Boffrin? The dice giveth, and the dice taketh. And then he's got yeah, they do. Bless <laughs> RNG. <laughs> oh, Boffrin, thank you for being here. I always appreciate you being here. Um, and then there's the pepperoni cross. Uh, okay, so we're going to get into our very first combat. So yes. Piper is up first with that amazing initiative. So, oh, what I need to do here is I apologize. So combat, let's go over combat and how that works. So mm. we have range bands that we move in and out of in this game. So let me throw some range bands on the map for all of you. That's a range band. This is fascinating. Yeah, this is like the first exposure to Roll20 for a bunch of you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've watched your streams use it, but uh, still, like, actually playing with it. Yeah, it's fascinating. I like it. Okay. So there are our range bands that we have set up. So on your turn, you can do one maneuver and one action, I think it's called. I don't know, top of my head. Um, I'll find it here. Or you can do two maneuvers. Maneuver is like walking or running. Mm. There we go. All right. But one action and one maneuver or two maneuvers. So an action is roll for a skill or activate a mutation. A maneuver is move up one range band, seek cover, get an item or gear, pick up an item, draw a weapon, aim a ranged weapon, reload a gun, use an item. So you can either move and attack or you can like move twice essentially, or move and take cover, or move and pull out an item, or equip an item. Uh, you can defend in combat also, but you can only defend once in combat. Um. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just looking at Boffer in chat there. You can only defend once in chat in um, combat. So if you get attacked more than once, you only get one defense roll. Mm. And the way the range bands work is... So... We have, oh my god, I'm still drawing lines on the map. Let's stop doing that. So right now where Cleaner is, Cleaner is considered to be short range. And so Cleaner, you can move up one range band and that will put you in this spot. And then you'd be near, near range. Um, mm -hmm. But to get next to them to do, to do uh, a melee attack, you'd have to move to arm's length. So that'd actually be two range bands you'd have to move in. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So, like, you could be anywhere in this zone if you moved up, and you'd be short range from that one. You could go anywhere you want. I don't care. You tell me where you move. But as long mm -hmm. as you're not next to one of them, because then that's considered arm's reach. So okay. you can move up over here. There's no, like, I can only move six squares because that's my movement. No, no, no. You can go anywhere you want in the next range band. Um, gotcha. And that's fine. Okay. And you can take cover behind a car or a t-rex a big plastic t-rex or whatever it is whatever's there <laughs> I know the t-rex i can throw a t-rex down on there i will um so that's how the range bands work in this game you can move up one you can move up two if you use two maneuvers um this is a little different because in forbidden lands we're used to everybody going up to to arm's reach or arm's length because you're using a melee weapon because it's fantasy here a lot of people most people have ranged weapons so it's going to be interesting um how this works so even these dogs if they were to move up to you on their turn they'd have to make they'd have to use two maneuvers to engage you because they'd have to move mm -hmm. one would be to go into short range and another one would to go into arm's reach does that make sense could like to bite you mm -hmm. so there is something to say about st strategy to stay back if you have ranged weapons and fire into the next range band because you know it's going to take them two moves to even get up to you to to bite you you also know that big daddy over there ha at the back has a hunting rifle uh at his mm -hmm. side so he'll, he'll also be firing back at, at the group of you um, uh, go ahead so in a similar fashion since things don't necessarily go specifically off a grid if yep. something does say i don't know like a burst yep. or a, an explosive radius so does it just affect a range category like it or can you kind of like lob something in an area to where you might affect some things in that's an area but question. not other things that's a really good question because that never came up in forbidden lands so you're talking your grenade launcher 
Yeah, because I don't want to blow Tarkov up, but I don't know if it's possible to like choose where your explosive lands Do you... in this system. No, that's a that's a really good qu question. What page number is that damn thing on? Grenade launcher. It is on page... Sorry, I'll have that up for you in just a second. Module. The, the beauty of the first combat, the first... Explosions session. is on page 91 of the Mutant Year Zero, the, the one nice. that for the machines. Oh, for Mechatron? Uh, that's the one I found it for. Uh, I didn't look Thank up you. the original, the other one since he's a robot. Uh, the force of an explosion is measured by the blast power. Uh, let's see so, here. I've got when that. I... Oh, sorry. Right. Go ahead. So the the good news is if I spend the EP, it automatically hits, so I don't have to worry about that. And it has a blast power of nine. So and it says within near. So it can go up to long range. So Tarkov is it would be in near, yeah. If you targeted the doggies, the puppies, yeah. So I probably shouldn't be using that. I'm not... <laughs> yeah, effect Sorry, radius. Uh, powerful charges with blast range of seven or more can harm victims at even a short range. <laughs> the blast powder uh, power is then reduced by six. Uh, if so, I guess you can do it in a range. And then even hit one further at a less reduced uh, power, but uh, yeah, I mean you could probably try to shoot those dogs. True. Or I don't know. I guess I mean, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I have a different idea. Okay. Talk to me. What? Do, what's the idea? Well, you're really good at talking. And I figure, why do we necessarily have to kill people? Why not Why not just blow up their fucking house and then you make a point? I mean... Who's blowing up the house and how? Me. With your, I mean, I'll launch a grenade at their house. Nobody said cleaning robot has to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> just shoot it into their window and then have it explode inside. Exactly. All right. All right. I like it. Nobody messes with like my it. darling boy. There's uh, no corruption in this game. We're good. I, I think I think that would uh, further and you know in in incise them uh, in in antagonize. Yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. Well, what's Piper doing? Doesn't she go first? Uh, Piper goes first. Yeah. Well, let's we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so Piper, you are you are like three range bands away from the dogs. Would that be long? where you're at um do you have a long range weapon or are you i all sure like... do okay so yeah you are currently long range this would put you at short range anywhere in here anywhere you want you can move your token don't don't mind me uh i was gonna look for a, a t-rex so i'm gonna move kind of Kind of behind the cars, so okay. maybe I won't get hit by who knows what. And I'd like to shoot at. I don't know how to do this. Ah, oh, guy. hold down the left mouse button; and it'll ping. Left. This guy. The big, big boy. Oh Daddy, yeah, Daddy Dearest. Daddy Dearest. All right, there's a T-Rex statue right next to you. You could be hiding under it. It's huge. It's massive. It's a big plastic. <laughs> It's, it takes up a massive chunk of the yard. A big plastic T-Rex. Oh, my. They'll never see me down here. Okay, so you're you're in the shadows of the T-Rex. So go ahead and um, make me a shoot roll against uh, Daddy Deer. So you take your base die, you take your skill for shooting, and you take your gear dice associated to the gun. So what kind of gun do you have? Uh, I have a bow. A bow. Silence, but deadly. Like a crossbow or a bow bow? Bow bow. Bow bow. <laughs> so that gives you, a, <laughs> a, gives you one gear die, and it does one point damage. So damage is static in this. Okay. Remember that. Unless you roll additional sixes, which you can add on as extra damage, but we'll, we'll see how the dice fall, nice. shall we?
Blessed is the passing of the green streamer. Player lives. <laughs> are forfeit. <laughs> Lives are forfeit. Hallowed is his reaping. <laughs> Pray your dice are braced. <laughs> uh Boffrin. He sent me like images. He's like, hey, you should buy this and use it as a Grim Streamer logo. He sent me all kinds of stuff. <laughs> He's the best. Okay. That's, That's your role? Yeah. Because I don't have any points in shoot. Oh, shoot. Why did it did it roll three dice for gear? It should have. I only put one in it. Okay. I've had five zero one. Okay. So you got two successes. You hit him. So one six is all you need. You automatically hit and you do the base damage for that weapon, which is a one. So you hit him for one damage. You have another success. You could spend it on a number of things. Um there's various options. The best in combat is usually adding on another point of damage. So Ooh, it would do two damage, damage. Yes. rather than one. Double do down. Do you, do you wish to do this? Meow meow. Meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a nine. Okay. He is going to try and uh, defend. He's going to attempt to defend. This is his one defend roll for the round. Oh, he's got some interesting stats. Um, he's going to do this. Boop, boop, boop. He is unsuccessful in defending. He takes two points of damage. How and where does the arrow hit daddy dearest? I I'm going to go for the mass. So somewhere in the chest area. Yeah, he's a, and he's a big boy. He's a big fella. Yeah. He's wearing. He's also wearing a trucker hat. He's just kind of got on like a a button up shirt, and it's unbuttoned halfway down. He's got a chest hair hanging out, and his guts hanging out at the bottom of his shirt. He's wearing a pair of jeans, and he doesn't have any shoes on. He's just wearing some plastic bags on his feet, and uh, right in his chest hair. Then <laughs> right in his chest hair. Boom! It sinks in. He goes, "Oh, boy, boy, get the rest of them kids. We're under attack." <laughs> Here All right, cleaner. <laughs> There's some kind of cat lady just shot me the bow. I know I shouldn't, but... <laughs> There's no Man. correction. You're good. Those poor kids. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to try to eat my darling boy? Well then, fatty, fuck your kids. <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> goon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh man, this house is going down. Those poor kids. <laughs> it's all right. They're all inbred hicks. It's okay. I'm saving them from themselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're cannibals. So they are basically like you know, he people. just walked through the door and I'll just kind of like lob it past them through the door <laughs> into the house. You, he opens the door, gets an arrow right in his chest, then a grenade goes past him. All right, so you don't need to roll, right? Like it just happens. Yeah, I'm going to spend the energy point. It just, it's blast nine for what that's worth. Huh? So how does this work here? Okay, blast nine means, do you roll nine dice? No. I think so. Holy crap. It's ridiculous. It was on 91, Mike said. 91 or 92. <laughs> we mark off that energy. Worth it. So uh, worth it. Jeremy. You've actually gotten your, your you beautiful back because you've been out in the sun for like every hour. Mm. You have you have built in um, solar panels. So you are, you're at uh, your full EP trying to think like what's some random garbage it's like there's probably some bones from stuff that we've eaten recently that i've collected like twigs and other junk and it's just this huge mess and the the chest cavity opens up and it starts swirling and it's all of the garbage and a little bit of like electricity that kind of charges it up a little bit before it raises up kind of tesla coil style and so just, so the house looking at the range bands the house is behind him so he's not going to be in the because he's he's not going to be in the blast radius well, that's okay um, so no. yeah, you, you're going to yeah. roll me 96. Good. 
I'll just do that. I is that, should I just roll like? Oh wait, I think for every one... six they suffer one point of damage. Well, this is gonna be the house, the structural integrity of the house. Roll right. a lot of sixes. Okay, let me roll nine. If there was any goodies in that house? You're not gonna find them now. They were gonna <laughs> hurt my darling boy. <laughs> oh, no man. sixes. This is why I can't I still mess up their house. Can you push that? <laughs> I don't think no, I can. No, you can't push damage. Oh, wow. Well, it still felt good. It did. And it, it was impressive. So it was thunk, right over his shoulder and then <laughs> explosion behind him. Uh, him and Ezekiel. I implore you, evaluate your situation and back the hell off, fat boy. There's smoke billowing out of the windows. The wind, the glass in the windows is blown out. Uh, you can hear screaming inside the house. Um, <laughs> women, children screaming inside the house. Ah, ah! Daddy, dearest, what's going on? Daddy, mommy, dearest. Uh, <laughs> screaming. There's a fire has has broken out in the, in whatever room is behind him. Yes. I set something on fire in my first session. I'm in so one mad. fire achievement, yes. Uh, yeah, fire for effect. Some women and children. They're cannibals, though. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> okay, I'm... Uh... All right. Very good, very good. Uh, Vincent, you're up. You've just witnessed this. You can hear screaming <laughs> from inside the house. Yeah. There's voices. There's, you see faces in the second story window of this house and they're like oh my god and they're all these goofy looking inbred children uh, <laughs> in the windows <laughs> raging uh, in ages from like 9 to like 47 <laughs> there oh my goodness oh well my. first off i guess i'll move up a little bit closer um mm -hmm. i was in a back band range and i moved up a band range so uh where am i now what's that distance you from are now I have so many things in front of me. You are now within... I'm going to put some cheat sheets in here for us next time. Uh, you are short range from okay. the folks in front of you. All the dogs and the kids. You are short range. Okay, and then I need to look something up. Okay. So near is closer than short, right? Correct. Okay. Near so would be then... in the same range band as them. Yeah. All right. So because I am in a uh, short distance, um, I'm just going to uh, go up, take cover behind this car, look down and pick up a rock off of the ground and just chuck it at uh, um, one of the one of the dogs. Oh, one of the dogs. OK. Do you like how I made you a car? Yeah. I represented yeah. you as a I car. Like I didn't know what to use. Yeah. And and it's Mike right. is a mob boss throwing a, a bomb or a mob yeah. throwing a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I suppose uh, that's a shoot. Yeah, Which shoot. I'm not a good at, but uh, oh wait, no, I did put a point and in it. So. The rock will give you. I'll give you one gear dice for that. The rack. Um, uh, it... I appreciate. I appreciate you giving that to me, but I'm looking at the table. It doesn't give you one. So. It doesn't. Like no, it, it does not. Nothing. It, it, oh, it does one rock. damage. Oh, but it does yeah. one damage. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, I had to take that. It, it does know, damage, a... Jeff. Yeah, yeah Jeff's like, yeah. really? A rock? So it gives him no bonus to his roll, but he <laughs> does do damage. Yeah, so here's hoping uh, I have the same luck with rocks, right? Uh, so... No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Yeah, I know. So Vincent rolled one Hey, six. I got one. So connects. You... <laughs> you wind up, you whip a rock over this dog. Where are you? Where do you hit it? You know what? Uh, let's have some fun. Let's push this. So uh, if, that would mean I need to do two base and one skill. Okay. All right. Go big. Go home. Huh? Um, nope. All right. And you got no ones. Right. So, yeah. So, no bad, still. no good. You still do your one damage. Whip yeah. the rock at the dog. <laughs> it uh, lets out a little bit of a whimper, and uh, rock bounces off of its, I don't know, face, snoot, mm -hmm. wherever. And that takes us to Sunny. 
Yeah. So Sonny <laughs> is gonna. Yeah, I guess we could throw Sean in there too. Yeah. Uh, Sonny's gonna say, "All right, here's the deal. You're gonna give me my friend back, and we're gonna leave, and we're gonna let you keep the rest of your houses. Otherwise, my buddy here, or Ma, as we like to call it, uh, will uh, burn down your damn house." Take it or leave it. Your so call. To intimidate. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give you bonus die because their house is on fire and just got a bomb <laughs> rolled in it. I think that uh, that makes sense in this situation. Um, I'll give you a. I'll give you two extra dice on that roll. Just put those on your skill. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look here. Intimidate. Where we get? Where to go? All right. Well, intimidate is an enforcer skill, isn't it? So would it be manipulate? Uh, there's no intimidate skill. Wow. There's um, endure, force, fight, sneak, move, shoot, scout, comprehend, sense emotion, manipulate, heal. Uh, I I believe in, intimidate is an enforcer skill. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So. So basically, uh, I'm I'll say manipulate. <laughs> I'm making him an offer he can't refuse, yeah. or else he'll burn his house down and kill them all. Manipulate. So, uh, all right, we'll bump that up to plus two. We'll roll it. Uh, no gear dice. Yeah, I think that's effective. <laughs> so he got three successes, folks who can't see this. Three successes. No, four, four. successes. <laughs> all right. Well, Sonny, what does this look like? What do you do? You kind of stroll forward. Like, how do, how do you... Hey. Uh, like, what is yeah, I'm walking about? up. I got my pistol. You know, I got my scrap pistol because we all got pistols here in the house. Uh, I'm going to walk up to him uh, and I'm just going to be like, all right. And I'm going to give the speech I gave. Uh, and then I'm going to end with the catchphrase of, and the house always wins. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, take it or leave it. Mm, I suggest uh... you take it. So that means that uh, you get to with your with a success you he reluctantly does what you want the GM decides what this is and then every extra will give will um, give him a point of doubt. Yeah, and if he uh, for every doubt that he suffers, so he'd suffer three doubt. If that breaks his will, he gives it to me for free. He doesn't ask for anything in return. Uh, his wits. Um, as will yeah let's see here what's uh doubt eight page eight that's uh empathy i believe because he does not have any points in will so if it's his empathy you shatter him <laughs> um we broke him uh, <laughs> so well, happy. if it's empathy yeah he he drops the ground he's bleeding he's holding his hand to his chest there's a <laughs> arrow sticking out of it his children are screaming and running out of the house behind him ezekiel's down on the ground like pa pa are you all right ah uh, ah uh, what do you want just take whatever you want get out of here don't you know, this is a nice quiet where's the family. key at to get my friend out of the cage huh nice quiet family what do you why did you come here do this to us we just wanted to have you for dinner why right you, you wanted to eat us you're lucky i'm not leaving you dead where's the key to get my friend out of the cage I ain't asking you again. He, he his hands shaking. He reaches a pocket and just holds out a key and tosses I, it in the snow. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll walk over uh, and just like deadpan, like staring everyone in the eye, just staring them all down. As I walk up and I like go up to the cage and I unlock it, and then I like yeah, Tarkov I'm gonna, is unconscious, but uh, he see you look him over and he seems he seems to be okay. He seems yeah, so he's breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. He's still breathing. Because if he wasn't, you wouldn't be. So um, I'll like fireman hoist him over my shoulder and like start like walking away. Sonny, a query. Perhaps he has other keys. I see something else that looks quite valuable. Yeah, that'd be nice if I didn't have to carry him all the way back. Perhaps if we had a little uh, transportation, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I like that. Where's the keys? As I'll uh, thumb towards the uh, the RV. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you kind of broke this guy, didn't you? Damn it! Do I see the keys uh, <laughs> on the ring that I have? No, the keys aren't on there. Shucks. No. 
Uh, you've done uh, wait, so, so, uh, oh, wait, what'd you say? Sorry, I, was, I interrupted. I said, uh, oh, are you talking about Matt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. He was about I, to say something. I broke that guy. That's what he said. Okay. I'm really glad I went with him, uh, with empathy as my second highest straight scat. Nice. <laughs> and then put three into manipulate. You've done enough. I gave you what you wanted. I gave you what you asked for. You wanted you wanted this this guy. Go. Oh, you uh, said uh, take anything. Uh-uh. So uh here's here's where I'll step in. Okay. <laughs> you you don't do what this man wants. You're gonna have even bigger problems. And by bigger, I mean Real big. As uh, I'm gonna, now that I'm within close range of him, I'm going to use mind terror in order to create an illusion. Oh, uh, oh you're, so, and the you're a horrible, will... horrible people. <laughs> as uh, blowing up his as, house uh, and his children. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point behind me and say, "You see, we mean business." And I'm gonna make him think that there's two tanks behind us. Two tanks. Yeah. I was hoping you're gonna make him think the T Rex came to life. Oh, I thought you were gonna just line up like all <laughs> those dead children. Fun. I thought that's okay. what you were gonna do. No, all those no. dead children in like, the snow. Uh... No. <sighs> That'll be twelve correction. Yeah. Survival uh, so, of the coldest. You know Sorry. what? We'll let you keep. We'll okay, let you keep living, doing what you're doing. We want that RV. So what is this? Look like? So you're using a mutant power, right? Yeah, it, it cost me two mutant points in order to for it to be so you know this one. So let's roll on the table. All right, hang on. I need to reduce my. So far, we've points. got a bigger schnoz, and our cat person has now become more human than human, and uh, for six days. Oh yes. Okay, so I spent two points. <laughs> For each, I got so six twice, right? It's yeah. for each each mutant point spent. Yeah, weird. It asked me for the mutation points, and I put in two, and then it just does that. So I got a six, right? Uh, oh, well, five and a one. If you hover five over it, one. Hover over it. It did. Oh, two six. so you're. Do you add them together though? You can't fail mutation. Isn't roll one basic die for each mutant point you activated. If you roll one or more. It misfires. Oh no, so it doesn't add together. Okay, so for your five, mutation changes your appearance in some way. You choose how. It's cosmetic and it's permanent. Mm -hmm. So cosmetically, how does this change you? Uh so Devil Horns. Nah. <laughs> um We'll go with uh his skin um turns like a complete like alabaster white like um all color re like recedes from it so you're like a albino. snow white even yeah and kind of kind of gray kind of grayish a little bit too do you uh, sparkle are you iridescent no 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 not nothing like that um it's just that uh, it looks like he's uh uh you know he ashen. spends time underground yeah ashen there that's you go that's what boffrin said ashen yeah so, oh, but I want to call them sparkles. The oh, you're a sparkling <laughs> vampire. Well, the other thing is, Adam's getting another mutation. That's right. Your mutant Dude. powers run amok, and you suffer mm -hmm. one point of permanent trauma. So, one of your stats is permanently going to drop down by one point. You get to choose which one. It's up to you. And we get to develop a new mutation. We get to roll on the mutation table. I lost fantastic. Some, I lost some empathy since this guy was so. What does it look like I... when you use that power? Like, like, does it manifest in any way? I'm just curious, like, how this is playing out in the snow. I'm sure. Yeah, you see some like ripples uh, through the air. Yeah. Um, kind of like a kind of like either heat waves or like, a, you know, the the predator what it did in the air when it moved, um, heading from my brain to his brain. Mm. Okay, and then it, so Vincent's skin just all of a sudden turns like ashen white or gray as he's doing this and then he starts to scream as his body contorts and twists nah. let's roll a d roll me 2d6 or d66 if you, i think there's a button for it 22 
Human magnet. We have another Magneto. <laughs> Fucking uh, awesome. We should we should roll it again. Yeah, that way let's, we're not. Let's not have duplicate. Not double it up. Two magnetos. But you can gather more scrap that way, bro. <laughs> I, I could, but uh, I wouldn't want to, you know, take away from someone else, right? Oh my God! What? You, really you gotta to keep it. <laughs> you literally have to keep that. Sixty-one. <laughs> reroll. <laughs> again? Yeah. 50, 52 to sixty-six is reroll. Okay. 34. All right. Parasite. Oh. Oh, God. I should just kept that many. You are a human parasite <laughs> capable of absorbing the life force of another living human being. I like uh, this. At arm's oh, length. with ash and skin. Steal one point of any attribute from your victim uh, for every mutant point you spend. Steal a mutation from another mutant. Costs one mutant point. You can use that mutation next turn. Or heal another humanoid's trauma. Every point to be healed costs one mutant point and will inflict the same amount and type of trauma to you. Nice. That's really cool. That is cool. So, is this... Wait, is so that manifest? permanent? It's permanent, yes. He's gained so you can mutation. steal an attribute point permanently from someone. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's 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 temporary. You can't... Oh, uh, okay. No, no, it's, it's not... It's not oh, really? temporary, it's just that you can't exceed your maximum score. Oh, so if you take damage, it's basically healing. Yeah. Like it's 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 life stealing. Oh, okay. So your own maximum thing, score. Okay, got it. Does I understand this now. Manifest cosmetically in any way? Um not yet. Okay, cool. Cool. Not yet, yeah. Maybe the first time you do it or something, like Yeah, he he uh He's he's like racks in pain and he just uh, gets down on his knees and um, like he shows his face to um, Daddy Dearest but none of you and then he like Daddy Dearest gets to see the full effect of the uh, change that I will think about over the coming play sessions. Whatever it is is scary, right? That's awesome. That is yeah. that is cool. I love it. Um, you're We're the good guys. Changed. It's permanently changed there. All right. So, Dan no, I thought of it. I thought of it. So okay. then, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, he he turns around and like half of his uh, jaw splits open like like that. Ah! Um, yes. And, uh, uh, you see yeah. you see this like uh, uh, spike underneath here that. Uh, is uh, meant to like uh, poke into something skin and it draws back and he is, his jaw shuts and he looks normal again, except for ashen. That's awesome. It is within arm's reach. So you got to get up in there and just <laughs> stick that <laughs> stinger or whatever it is into them. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, he's a v -v -v vampire. <laughs> not quite. That's so he's terrified and it's two tanks is what you manifest what he saw. Yeah, that's what he sees. No one else does. Okay. Oh, oh, please, please, you've already... My family, my family, be please here. He reaches his pocket. He pulls out a key ring. It's got a, it's got a little horseshoe on it, and there's like a single key for the, the camper. And please, please don't... Oh, don't kill my kids. You're horrible people. Take, take the, it, leave. You're the one eating our friend. I didn't eat nobody's. You were going to... Yeah, was he simply, was eating everybody's. This was preemptive defense. Don't come back. Leave us alone. We didn't we didn't hurt you. We didn't harm you. Leave us be. You better wish we never have to come back, alright? Oh, he's just he's still got the arrow poking out of his chest and he's sitting there and his blood just oozing out. Go! Just go. Alright, guys. Roll out. I I'm not ready to go yet. I'm gonna like carefully go by the dogs and try to hiss at them, but it doesn't quite come out right. And then okay. I'm going to take my arrow back. Are you gonna pull it out of the chest? <laughs> I've only got five. Resources are tight. I'm so sorry, sir, but I need my arrow back. Just well, one more he got thing. the point, right? Just the <laughs> end. Just one more thing. Literally. Take anything you want. Oh. I now agree with you, Jeremy. We are good people. 
Oh, that's great. So you son, oh yeah, you hiss at the dogs and they 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 whimper, especially the one that had the rock hurled at it. And you walk over and Ezekiel's like laying o- like sitting over his father and trying to mend to his wounds and again you hear screaming and shouting inside. What's going on, daddy dearest? What's going on? Poor Maribel, she's she's been hit. What's going on? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> You saw it over and you pull the arrow out and he passes out from the pain. <laughs> uh, roll me a d66, please. Not it. No, it, oh no, it's it's you. It's, it's you. You pull that arrow out. Oh no! I'm awful. You're all awful. Now I know what I'm dealing with. Uh, <laughs> I just crushed his spirit. I didn't even shoot him or stab him or mind mess him. I mean, I'm a nice person, all right? <laughs> oh. oh, you know what? No, it's it's all good. He, uh, it's, there's no roll. He, he passes out. He passes out and he's like wheezing. <laughs> As you pull the arrow out. As it does a, it did a point of damage pulling it back out because it's like, you know, barbed in a way that it does. It hurts him to pull it out. And Ezekiel's like, just go, just go. He's crying. Leave this hurts dear, you a lot more than it hurts me. I invited you over supper and in my house. Why Why you gotta do this? That was very practical of you, Fleabag. I'm proud. <laughs> Please leave us alone. Leave us alone. Um, yeah, you get in this Winnebago. This thing is like, it is, you walk inside. There's armor plating all around it on the front and on the window. Um... The inside though is all decked out. There's like there's there's some grub in there. Uh it looks like there's some like canned goods and this is this this looks like it is set up as a vacationing vehicle. Like there's not like guns and all this in here. It's not a a, a vehicle for mass destruction. It is this is their they go out on holiday in this thing. So you're taking their their family camper and you're exiting the premise with it and uh and your I'll friend. eat some of the train on the way out. Yo, what's right? Uh, you said there's trash sitting out there. Yeah, there's trash at the front. Yes. I replenish the energy from the grenade. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, you eat some trash. That's fine. You you go back in, and um, you get to cleaning the inside, right? Of the Winnebago. Vincent, you're driving, eh? Mm-hmm. There's no driving skill. Um, no, actually. Not. Is there? No, there there's some rules for it. Yeah. This thing doesn't have like studded tires or chains on the tires or anything, so and it's really slippery out. You're, mm-hmm. you're just like, it's like this big monstrous beast, and you're peeling out of there and you're driving across a field, remember, to get to the roads, and the roads aren't plowed. <sighs> driving sounds it's alright. We can always have clean a push if we get stuck. Uh, vehicles uh, work are in chapter six. Zone travel. I don't anticipate always being that terrible, but I had a really bad feeling about them. And then as soon as as soon as Vinny's like, "Ma, they're gonna hurt me." Yeah, that's it. Uh, oh. Yeah, I figured they were cannibals, but oh, Sonny's yeah. like, "We'll see how this plays out." They were inbred cannibals. They were humans. Those were pure <laughs> humans that you guys met out in the wastelands. They were wow. Humans. Those things are rare. Yeah. <laughs> they're very pure. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. So pure. They're, they're just a bread. Uh, it just talks about doing stuff during turns. Uh, it provides a gear bonus. Most re- vehicles require fuel to run. Um. It says you have to make a jury rig roll. Find a vehicle in this shape you can re- or repair it. I mean, we can use jury rig to make me drive it and then look into it later if we want to sure, just Sure, let's on. do that. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's only two two cans of grub in here. Not rolling too good. Yeah, you're good. That's good enough. Um, <laughs> it, it is swerving and here and there, and you're having our time, and you don't really know where the road is. And the road's not in great shape either that you're driving mm-hmm. on. It's all torn up. But um, you do a good enough job to get 
out of this zone and back the way you came um, to the east of here. Here, I'll move your little triangle. We should get a camper <laughs> on the map. Uh, camper brings up nothing. What's it called? Yeah, that escalated quickly. Yeah, I did not expect <laughs> that outcome whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, you, you guys drive through zone. There was, for traversing that zone, there was one rot also. So please go ahead and take that rot or roll for it. I can't find a, I can't find a, a camper, but I'll give you a hot dog cart instead to represent your, oh, nice. your progress awesome. on the map. Uh, so we get another <laughs> rot. Another rot. Uh, I guess you're the only one who can roll to resist rot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. Hmm. While we're in the uh, camper, mm -hmm. uh, I'd have a cleaner, like make sure that everything's pretty clean and sterile, if not. Uh, oh. And then I'm going to take a look at Tarkov because I have the heal skill. So uh, mm -hmm. I will attempt to, you know, try to make sure that he's okay. Yeah, yeah. you want to assess him? Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Give him a once over. Go ahead and make me a roll and you can see what's going on in him. I got yeah. two. He he looks like he's been resting, so he's he's in good shape. He's but it looks like he's been drugged, and that's why he's been, he's passed out. Mm. So he's he's okay, your buddy Tarkov. You guys speed back through the wastelands, and you make your way back to the Ark, and um, you arrive, and this makeshift wall has been built. Oh no! It's it's not using the D one hundred Y hundred rules. It is using the uh, free league. We're playing we're playing free leagues. We're game of Mutant Year Zero with their rules. Um, you guys make your way back to the arc, and this wall has been built up around. Like I said, it's makeshift. There's like cars that have been stacked. They're junk cars. They're nothing that uh, was of use to you, Vinny. Uh, there's just like pieces of uh, metal siding that have been chained together and strewn together, and they've taken like they've filled sandbags and and put them up but it's like this ramshackle makeshift haphazard wall but it'll do the job to keep anybody away uh who wants to uh invade your your arc so you guys make it back and everybody is quite astounded by what you pull up in alcazar in particular says hey that's the arcs get that thing in the garage and that's for all of us yeah sure yeah uh where, where were those men? Uh, we waited for them. They never showed up. Uh, yeah. It's a lie. You left without them. You wanted all the glory for yourselves. You, everybody, you see this. And he shouts to every, people are gathering around upon your return. You see this? I told you this was going to happen. They were going to leave. And they just wanted everything for themselves. How long did we wait? How long was that, uh, Ma? You, your clock still working? Yes. It does. And he, like, Cleaner will give, like, you know, so many minutes, so, you know, days, minutes, hours, minutes, like, some, like, ridiculous. One day, two hours, three minutes, and 27 seconds. What, how long you were gone? Or however long we waited. Or... Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, the whole thing took you, like, 10 hours around trip to do this. It was a day trip. Um... Yeah, we were supposed to meet... At this time, we waited for however long Ma says, and then we left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, see, what, I see what you guys are saying. No, they were there. They were there. Don't believe them. They're liars. My men, right here. Jacob and yeah, Stephanie yeah, yeah. and Stanley. They were all here waiting. Well, uh, we didn't need them anyway. As you can see, great success. We got Tarkov. We got this thing. So, uh, yeah, great success. Because the house always wins, right? <laughs> Fade to uh, two credits. Uh, yeah, the house always wins. <sighs> so you guys success successfully rescued Tarkov. Um there is going to be another artifact on this Winnebago, so I will get uh, you to roll me a D666. 
Six, six, six. The number of the beast. Two, six, three. Hmm. Okay. And now you have to roll to comprehend it? Is that what it is? Yeah. You got another can... pill bottle. I don't know what's with you and pills, Vincent. Ah, uh, you know, uh, it does the body good. Uh, I think you just got to take them and see what what happens uh, sometimes. <laughs> but uh, every now and then the writing's still good. Uh, you know, <laughs> the one time the writing was only on the pill. And uh, one time I thought it was like Tylenol after dark, but it ended up being Adderall. Ooh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you passed. So you comprehend what they are? What yeah, I know how to use it, but I can't teach anyone else. So these are energy pills. Uh, you immediately <laughs> heal all fatigue that you have suffered. Unfortunately, there are only enough pills left for D6 doses. And when you've consumed them all, you must discard this artifact. So it's a, it's hey, a, uh, a little pill bottle of energy pills. Hey, uh, so what these is... Uh... They, they they keep you up if you need to keep going. Uh, so, you know, we could keep them in case we get into a tight spot. We could turn these into the arc and, uh, you know, have, them, have our uh, scribey scholarly types uh, look at Chroniclers. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Chroniclers. Yeah. It uh, takes 20 technology. A developmental requirement is 20 technology. Wow. I guess if you wanted to make them or... Right, but uh, can't we turn them in? Yeah, yeah do we, we when we turn them in, in, does it get the group technology? Or how does that work? Like, there's some you keep... Like, you choose whether or not to keep a, an artifact or... Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll look into that between sessions. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't want to give fine. you the wrong thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we can uh, we can look at that. So that... That brings us to the end of the rescue, Tarkov. So we have, we have the water purification needs to be, needs to be worked on. We've got a threat to the west. Here, let's, let's move, let's move our hot dog cart over to the west to represent the, the unknown threat over there. They've seen some people. They've seen something sticking out of the water, and out of the shore. And uh, you need to find something to do with water pur purification to fix uh, whatever's going on with yours, because the rot is seeping in. But you brought back Tarkov successfully, and you fought off some inbred cannibals. That's Ray. right. And you have an RV, a decked-out armored RV. Making the That's world pretty... a better place. Which was not expected, but hey, it happened, so... Yeah. It happened. Uh, four experience for the session. Nice. Which is pretty that? good, because there's a bunch of boxes that you ticked. You completed the mission, you... Did some zone exploration. He did some other stuff. He got some artifacts. So, four XP is pretty good in this game. It's pretty high, and Ken will get it also. I like to even if someone can't make it, you get you get the experience. I'm not going to penalize you. That's kind that's of cool. you. Yeah. And um, that's we got to see about raw points, maybe. Oh yes, thank you for reminding me. We got to run yeah, raw rot points. You got to roll a d6 for each thing of rot you have. And if it's a one, it stays permanently, right? Right, right. Nope, four and a four and a four. So you scrub yours away in the bathtub. Somebody roll two ones. Oh, no. Oh, we got to look up the robot rules for rot to see what that means. Do you permanently lose? The, the, the I don't know. Different for robots. That's why I hesitate. I would roll two ones. That's rubber, rough. Rubber band has its own entry in the glossary, but rot doesn't. In in Mechaton, I'm looking in Mechaton right or uh, Mechatron. Is it? What is it? We'll look it up between sessions. That's fine. We don't need to sit here. Yeah. Here yeah. And uh, look it up, but uh, that sucks. That's all right. Rat. Okay, so you got two points of rot and. Uh, Nothing for, uh, I was going to call you Sully again. Sunny. Nothing for Sunny. Nope, Sunny's clean. The casual Mechaton. Yeah, yeah. Mechatron. Thank you. I called it Mechaton. 
Make a ten. Uh, Make a ten. Um, yeah, for experience. And um, so, do we want to decide right now when we're going to play again? And then people who are watching us can know when to tune in again to see the next session. This is a once a month game. Oh, uh, you know, the other thing is um, we're playing Free League's game. And something exciting is happening right now for Free League, right? Oh, well, thank you for reminding me. Free League has a Kickstarter yeah. campaign going on right now for Forbidden Lands, which people who are regulars here on the channel are more than familiar with because I've run Forbidden Lands for like six or seven months now on the channel. And I'm a huge fan of, kind of a fanboy. So they have a Kickstarter going on for um, the Bitter Reach campaign and also a reprint of the base game. So the Bitter Reach is a map that takes you to the north of the existing map that's in the game now. It takes you to the, the snowy mountains. Uh, I know eventually they want to make expansion maps for each quadrant, north, east, west, south. Um, so the first one is going to be the north. So you're going to have a whole bunch more material and more encounters. And I'm hoping more classes or professions. But we'll see uh, coming out. So take a look at that and support them if you're so inclined because they're making good games i'm a huge I, I know we're grim paris studios we love our games but we're also fans of other games and other people who are making stuff and i say me personally i'm a huge fanboy of free league and i love everything they're doing i just linked the campaign down in the chat let's be real you've killed a bunch of players yeah i know Boffrin. Hmm. i know i have uh, so, so do a little bit more of uh um you know talking about news and hopefully uh getting some reach out there uh if you like what you see um we are doing a, a patreon um if you also like what you see here um and you know consider subscribing to us and apparently uh, it's half price this month yeah so instead of five bucks it's or 49 it'll be 250 or 249 i just linked the patreon down in the chat also for everybody yeah so on the patreon you'll get uh early access to just about everything we do um, unless it's live, you know, here, um, then uh, you'll also get access to a, uh, uh, an exclusive podcast that we're doing of our Radiator Alpha game, where um, we are cr uh, creating a grim and post-apocalyptic game, and uh, it's going to be powered by the D100 Swyhander rules. So if you're interested in that, uh, uh, check us out on our Patreon. That's right. If you like post-apocalyptic, Hey, there's one coming to this white hander rule set, and Adam's making it. So, I think we also need a roll for how many uh, uh, people die from in the arc, oh, right? Oh yeah. At the end of a session, it's, and it's reduced because you guys did the food thing, right? Yeah, I think it's reduced by one. Whatever the roll is, is reduced by one. I'm gonna find that here. Arc threats against the arc. No. It's creating your arc. It was in that one, wasn't it? Hmm. I can't remember where you found it. I yeah. Ba, 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 ba. We do have to roll for that. Population. Ba, ba, ba. The season. It was really low. It was like a D4 or something. Or D2. I thought it was like a D6, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. Well, we can always roll at the beginning of uh, next session as well, instead of sitting here and flipping through True. the book. Um, we have a list of things we need to do. <laughs> we need to figure out what's going to happen to Cleaner for having two rot. Yeah. Yay. We need to figure out um, how many people how to died. Turn in, uh, how many people died, how to turn in an artifact. Um, any mutant who finds an artifact is supposed to hand it over to the Dawn Vault for the good of the people, page 113. Um, that generally will give you a bonus to your technology, although I've looked at some of them and they don't. Like the uh, pills that we have don't actually give us a, a dev development bonus. They don't. They just give us 20 technology. Mm. Yeah, it requires, I guess, 20 technology to make. So like the... Uh, chainsaw would give us uh, a d6 worth of technology and we would have to have 10 technology in order to make them your other pills don't give any dev bonus 
Yeah, it seems like a lot of the pills don't. Like, I'm not looking at all the pills, mm -hmm. but it's, I've noticed mostly pills are the ones that are... I'd hate to give up the chainsaw, because here's what I'm imagining. We install the chainsaw on Ma, start it up, and then we have Tarkov launch Ma at an enemy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, the Magneto powers! I didn't even think of that! <laughs> yeah. So, like, the Wolverine... Fastball yeah. special. Uh, fastball special. Yes. That's Don't that's what else. I want to see happen. Oh my I goodness. Didn't want Cleaner to be evil, but you guys are just putting it on a oh, silver platter. Like... Ken's, yeah, Ken's still in the chat. Ken, I hope you're listening. Oh, man. Oh, that is a great idea. Fastball special, <laughs> Mutant Year Zero style. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Yes. Throwing grenades in houses, blowing up children, and launching <laughs> chainsaw wielding robots across the wasteland. Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> and These robots too. are blowing up everything in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. I apologize for not having the rolls in the window. I will have the rolls on there next time. I'm also going to get links. I'm going to update the thanks, map. Thanks, Jenna. Hmm. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. I'm going to get the uh, links updated. Maybe I'll throw all of our stuff over in the Mutant Year Zero um, Reddit as well. And our progress. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll keep a diary over there. They seem to be very, very yeah. into all of that. So maybe we'll keep it all over there on top of our Discord. But I need to update the map to show the like, rot and all the other things that we've added. And um, we'll do that. We'll do that. Do we need to um, roll for defense? So how many... Uh development points we get from make or completing that thing our fence yeah our fence yes we have to roll what was it you're right thank you something it was warfare i don't know if it's one two or i think it was 2d6 i'm just trying to find it here yeah you're right we do get to roll that i just found some really good news <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah Page 91, The Rot. All robots are immune to the deadly plague that haunts the outside, known among mutants of the zone as The Rot. Some robots, especially the cleaning robot, are very effective against The Rot, however. Yay! <laughs> That's cheat codes. Cheat codes. <laughs> I still see, I imagine, like, cleaning bot probably has to take time dealing with, like, it's tarnished. Just, just, like, cleaning itself thoroughly for the next couple of days. Hey, he took one for the team. That's right. Okay, so yes, Ken Decay. These are all these are all folks, all of us are people associated with Grim Perilous Studios in some mm -hmm. way, shape, or fashion, and we decided to play Union Year Zero together. Uh so yes, Ken Decay is one of our players, and he was unable to join us this week, but uh we saved him, we rescued him, so he'll join us next time. Uh yeah, yeah. we get to roll two D six warfare. Add it to our warfare. Ooh. Uh, side note, this is the first uh, non-Zweihander game I've played in over five years. The other one also had Marlon Brando in it. Uh, yeah, I think it's been about five years since we played that uh, 7C game. Yeah, that was a fun game. For Marlon! Marlon. <laughs> um, so who wants to roll? We get to roll 2d6. Someone want to roll oh, yeah, sorry. and someone roll um, another one? There you go. That ain't bad. Uh, so that's 10. Yes, 10 plus 10 warfare. Nice. That moved us in another bracket, I believe. What? Uh, wow. Yeah, that moved us from 0 to 10. <laughs> we can't forget wow. either that Piper has lost her feral abilities for six days. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's crazy. More human than human. Um, more human than. <laughs> So yes, that does move us a bracket. More solid fortifications like scrap palisades and lookout towers defend the arc. There might uh, be some form of watch patrols. Battle level two. Hey, that's fitting. Seeing as how you guys built a wall. Cool. How we roll? Now we yeah, got to go battle van. Good thing. It's a good thing we have that for when the cannibals uh, launch a counter strike. When the yeah. red family of cannibals come back for uh, their Winnebago. 
I'm yeah. hoping the really strong winds from the lake are like blow the, the the tire tracks out, and so they can't follow us. We'll see. Six six yeah. days, Piper. Six days. Ugh, six days. Uh, That's rough. Rough. Meh, 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 I'm making no noise. <laughs> um. When do we want to play next? So these lovely folks can come back and watch us again play Mutant Year Zero. So I mean, we, I'm down for like next Saturday, but you guys yeah, choose. I, I'll show up. I am too. 21st. Um, I'm looking at the calendar. What do you, what do you all want to do? Cannot do the 19th. That's my only restriction. Can't do October 19th. Okay. 12 for or 26th. <sighs> Uh, twenty sixth maybe. Or... I'm okay with the twenty sixth. Um, can if there's a day that works well for you, let us know. Yeah. Our twelve. I'm trying to remember when I was last on call. That was last week, wasn't it? Uh, I'll get it up on calendar. I'll get it up yeah. on um our events. Fell, so I can't fell, do the twelfth. 12 is no good? Okay. Yeah. No worries. Ken, if you're, li Ken, if you're listening, but we're doing the 26th then? Oh, we got to wait a whole month. I know. Or, or the 5th. The fifth. We just go early. We just go 5th and make it happen. Just do it. October uh, 5? I'll, I'll make it work. As uh, I can make whatever weekend work. Yeah. <laughs> Until we get to good with the fifth? Thanksgiving. Yeah. October 5. I'm going to add it to our events right after the stream. It's, it was already being asked, so it'll be in our events. Um, if you guys are watching our events, you add them to your calendars or whatever else. It'll be in there, our next session of Mutant Year Zero. Tomorrow night, I am doing Pulp Cthulhu Masks of Nyarlathotep, starting at 8 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, we've been doing it for I don't know, 9 or 10 weeks now. We are at the end of the New York chapter. So we're going to wrap up New York tomorrow and the players are going to figure out where they want to go next in the world. Um, so it might be a shorter session, but uh, I expect some fun stuff because we threw on a mask last time and saw some Elder Gods and uh, there's an ominous pit with a stone slab on it that they want to open before they finish the session. So it should be good. should be fun. I know it's not, <laughs> they don't. Um, so that is on tomorrow night. Masks of Nyarlathotep using the Pulp Cthulhu rule set. Tuesday night um, is open for us. So expect possibly a cyberpunk one shot. And uh, Friday is also open. We've lost a couple of our uh, regular players and we've had to push some stuff off. So we might do another cyberpunk one shot on that night as well. I don't know. One of the two nights, Ooh. either Tuesday or Friday, you're going to see some cyberpunk on the channel. Uh, Tuesdays, uh, we also have the Gurren Perilous team building exercise, the second Gurren Perilous team building exercise where Jennifer, myself, and uh, uh, Christopher Birch, one of the playtesters, we uh, play Remnant live, and uh, Gurren Perilous uh, Gaming hosts us if there's nothing else, nothing else going on. That's uh, can... 6.30 Central, usually. You starting. Know, I just not run a game on Tuesday and just play with you guys. No, no, no. That's not <laughs> oh, that would I'm be here. bad. That's not no. why I'm here. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll play with you. I got the game. We'll, yeah, we'll make that happen. Right, Mike, Mike and I'll play. Yeah. yeah forget you guys. I'm going to play it after this, actually. Um, <laughs> see you online. Uh, <laughs> so Tuesdays and Fridays. So again, this is all going to be on the events. I just don't know what's going to happen on Tuesdays and Fridays. We usually have set games. It's up in the air this week. So we'll see. Tune in. Uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesdays and Fridays for our regular set games. And no Saturday until October 5th at the events after this. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and joining us. I yes, appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. For our session thank one. You. Thank you to the players for doing awesome, wild, crazy, unexpected things. I love it. I love it. It's the best. That was of awesome. Session. I did not yeah. expect this session to go that way. Every single one of us did something nice, like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay, there's no corruption. We're yeah. free. Oh, I know. We don't need to make a corruption roll. <laughs> there's no corruption, but just by playing the game, you guys are going to get like corrupted and rotted. Oh, I know. Gotta... It's <laughs> the best part. It's a different kind of corruption. I, yeah. think, uh, I think my character is probably going to go away pretty soon with how often I'm using these mutations and stuff. <laughs> Yay. Fallbach, thanks for joining us. Um, I think it was the first time you've, you've 
stopped yeah. by and been on the channel. So thank you so much for uh, joining us and uh, engaging in chat. We really appreciate it. We'd love to see you here again. Mm -hmm. And to all of our regulars, of course. But we'd like to see new faces. Could prep for more grim product. Yeah, yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you uh, tomorrow night for Cthulhu.